Good evening, Warriors Technological University welcomes you to the Blue Devil Stadium. Today, the Blue Devils host the Indiana Wesleyan University Wildcats. LTU is a proud member of the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics. The association and its members excel in developing student athletes to fulfill their personal and professional potential. The NAIA boasts more than 250 member institutions and 83,000 competing student athletes with more than 21 conferences. Visit NAIA.org for more information. The Blue Devils are competing in this season as full members of the Mid-State Football Association. The MSFA begins its 31st season as an NAIA affiliated organization in the Midwest with 14 schools in five Midwestern states. The Mid-State Football Conference in partnership with the NAIA Champion of Character Initiative it's great pride in the conduct of all its student-athletes, coaches, officials, and spectators. We encourage the cheering of your team during today's event, but with the spirit of good sportsmanship kept in mind. Lawrence Technological University, the NAIA, and the MSFA promote good sportsmanship by student-athletes, coaches, and fans. We request your cooperation in supporting the student-athletes and officials in a positive manner. Profanity, derogatory comments, or other intimidating actions directed at athletes, officials, team representatives, or other fans will not be tolerated in the ground for removal. Hungry? Thirsty? Please visit our concession areas located at the main entrance of Blue Devil Stadium, provided by Fuddruckers.
This Lawrence Tech Athletics broadcast is brought to you by Chevy. Your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers are proud to be the automotive sponsor of LTU Athletics. Chevy drives the Motor City. Henry Ford Sports Medicine treats the whole athlete. To make an appointment, visit henryford.com forward slash athletes. And Michigan First Credit Union. Michigan First offers a full range of financial products and services, including checking accounts, mobile deposits, student loans, and car loans. Visit MichiganFirst.com for details.
Welcome to Lawrence Tech's new football season. We are very excited and we look forward to having you join us and watch many games and seeing our great football team win all of them. We are just starting our new 23-24 school year. We are starting our new College of Health Sciences. All the faculty and staff are looking forward to welcoming our new students coming in to this new year. We look forward to having you on campus and go Blue Devils! Welcome everybody, it's the official last weekend of August and it's a Saturday night and in a few moments we'll be underneath the lights as we welcome you to another exciting season of Lawrence Tech football. He's John Goble, I'm John Stowe, we welcome you to our TV20 broadcast. And John, let's just get right into it. We got opening night conference play, it's a wide out crowd. You got Lawrence Tech, the hometown team, taking on the Wildcats of Indiana Wesleyan. And Wesleyan has a brand new head coach in Andrew Rohde coming from an incredible background at Morningside. Yeah, Coach Rohde uh, is definitely a great hire for them. Uh, it's de definitely difficult for Lawrence Tech to prepare for a game like this. They're going to be watching uh, t tape from Morningside to try to to determine what type of offense he's running. And then also trying to watch uh, a tape from last year from Indiana Westland uh, to see what type of players that they have. So, you know, game one's always always interesting, but to start off with a conference uh, opponent, that's that's always gonna be a big challenge. Now in Indiana Westland, a team themselves, they finished in the semifinals of last year. And so on the Lawrence Tech flip side, head coach Yvonne Mitchell, He's got his hands full because they lost a lot of seniors last year due to graduation, and they got two young quarterbacks in which are ready to take the ball here in game one. Yeah, yeah, one of the best players that they lost was uh, 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 Kolka, a quarterback who started several years here. So it's going to be tough to replace him, but they have two very talented guys. Um, I think getting the nod tonight is going to be Caleb Gardner. He's uh, out of Groves High School here in Michigan, and I remember him in high school. He's a talented player, very fast. He's going to be elusive, hard to contain. On the opposite end, you have Alex Osman. So Alex Osman, he's a freshman from Dearborn Fordson, and he's got quite the arm. So we'll, we'll see uh, between the two of them. I, I think they they have a winning uh, a chance here. So opening night, two programs trying to get on good winning tracks to start the season. And as you folks watch the show, you're going to learn a little more tips about this great university in Lawrence Tech. So before we head things off, we're going to go to commercial break. And we'll do the national anthem and come back for kickoff around 7 p.m. Because every athlete deserves to be treated like a pro. Henry Ford Sports Medicine. At Michigan First Mortgage, we believe a home is more than just four walls. It's endless possibilities, where relationships are strengthened and next steps are taken. It's a place to call your very own, where you can create new traditions and welcome family with open arms. And at Michigan First, it's at the heart of everything we do. Let us help you discover the possibilities of home. From our very first breath, curiosity is why we question everything through barrages of whys and how comes. It now needs the tools to will its vision into existence. Tools that will forever allow curiosity to obscure the line between technology and magic. Be curious. Make magic. Lawrence Technological University. Chevy Silverado has what it takes to do it all. With a Turbomax engine. And a 13.4 inch diagonal touchscreen. Any truck can help you make a living. This one helps you build a life. Chevy Silverado. Or GM employees with a current eligible lease can get this Silverado for $2.99 a month. Chevy drives the Motor City. Visit ChevyDetroit.com. Welcome back, everybody, to Southfield, nearby Detroit, in Blue Devil Stadium. We got college football underway as both teams are looking to meet towards the middle of the field to determine the, toy co the, co the coin toss. Indiana Wesleyan on the road taking on Lawrence Tech. 
And now we send it down to the field where the third member of our group joins us in Elizabeth Kuhn. Take it away, Liz. Week one of the 2023 season is underway and the Blue Devils will be taking on the Wildcats of Indiana Wesleyan for the traditional whiteout game. Coach Mitchell said he just loves the energy of this one. The students and the community really show out and he said there's no greater way to start the season. He said that this one is going to be a tough one though. We need to limit mistakes, win the turnover battle and just play smart football. And if we do all that, we'll be just fine. John, back to you. Liz, we'll be checking in throughout the entire game with different reports, both teams meeting up in the middle. And John Goble, this matchup we've been talking about, it may seem heavily sided on one favor of Indiana Wesleyan because they have a brand new head coach and because of the offense that they still have from a lot of leadership in their seniors this year. Yeah, yeah, you know, anytime you have a new coach coming in, uh, you know, you have to learn new systems, new playbook. The off is always gonna be challenged. You gotta prove yourself. They, they don't know what you did last year. You know, um, but they, they have a lot of returning uh, starters. And, you know, right now they're preseason, I think, what, t number five uh, for it only being their fifth year in existence. It's pretty impressive, you know. So this will be a, a good test for Lawrence Tech. Um, and I think, you know, Coach Mitchell has them prepared as well. Now, Coach Mitchell talks about the energy and the, and the chemistry building this team since the end of last season and trying to prepare them for an opening game like this against a heavenly powerful opponent, especially going for a 7-0 conference play last year and then ending up in the semifinals of the NAI National Championship Tournament. As both teams like to stand off. And it looks like Lawrence Tech will be receiving the opening kickoff in their offense, led by Cale Gardner, the sophomore, redshirt sophomore to be exact. Looks to lead their, looks to lead their team to an early opportunity. Energy is high. Up here in Southfield, the lights are on. Sunshine is still on the field in front of this wide-out crowd. Beautiful night for football. After all the terrible weather we've had the past couple of days, all the tornado warnings and the high humidity, we needed a night like this, especially with college football coming around the corner and getting college football here tonight. Yes, yeah, yeah. I know any uh, Metro Detroiters listening right now, hope you guys are all safe. I know I had a tree nearly, narrowly miss my uh, car and house, uh, so glad for that. But beautiful night tonight, you know. And I'll tell you what: when I was pulling up, the amount of people tailgating—that was that was impressive, you know. Uh, this this Lawrence Tech program is new, but this stadium is awesome. Overlooking the lodge right now, the the buildings in the background—I mean, it's just a great view. Um, I think it's awesome for this area and for the school. An incredible venue is Blue Devil Stadium. A lot. A lot of action happens within this stadium on that turf. A lot of high school games, especially all the other athletic programs, especially just this past just this past season, the w Lawrence Tech women's lacrosse team bringing home a national championship. National championship. And we'll touch further on that as the Blue Devils take the field. Their offense is looking very sharp. And back deep for them is Christian Brode and one of the captains. And alongside with him is Devon Benley, the redshirt sophomore. He's from, and Benley, he's a Detroit guy. He's from this area, well known. Yep, transferred in from uh, Central State as well. He's fast. He's fast wearing 22. As Wildcats look to set things up, and it's going to be Josh Clifton to kick things off. He's a freshman, 6'1", 155 from Bradley, Illinois. Yeah, good mix of, uh, you know, Indiana Westland, they have players from Michigan. They have players from, obviously, Indiana. Um, you know, but uh, quite a few players even from Florida on both teams, you know, so, um, you know, not just your local talent here. Uh, very, very uh, talented players. College football, man. Ready to go? I'm excited. Clifton's ready. Sidelines are ready. Crowd is ready. College football is back. So let's do this. From Southfield. That one's going near the sideline. Broden comes in, he makes the catch, nearly walks out of bounds. And he's gonna be tackled on, brought down with authority at the 20. And that's how this one gets going. Yep, 20 yard line. The wind is gonna be a factor. You could tell on that kickoff. Uh, it looked like it stalled about you know halfway in the air. That was a tough, tough one to catch. You know, uh, could have could have let it go out of bounds there, but um, he caught it, and we'll see how that plays tonight. Uh, two new quarter, quarterbacks for, uh, for for Lawrence Tech here. As we look at our starting offense for this Blue Devils squad, you got a lot of leadership and a lot of new faces. Yep, uh, Caleb Gardner out here getting the start. Uh, his first start as a college athlete. 
out of Groves High School. We'll see what we got here. Replacing a multi-year starter in Kolka. C.J. Davidson to his left. Opening snap, he does give it away to Davidson. Davidson with a Good huge game. gap right there and he has thrown out. And that's going to be a huge gain right there yep. to set up second down. That was good patience. So as a running back, you always, you, you never want to hesitate. Hesitation is the enemy, but patience is key. That was great patience, letting him set up the block and, uh, and burst in when, he, when the hole opened. And quickly out there is Devon Bentley. So both these running backs seem, and both those running backs are surrounding Gardner right now. So plenty of options to go to, including Gardner himself. A lot of wheels out there. He's a runner. So second down and five. They do give it to Davidson again, and he moves forward. He's got the first down, and he's going to be brought forward near the 40. There you go. Yeah. Getting a little chippy out there already. A couple of extracurriculars. No flags are thrown. But as you said, a little bit, a little bit chippy out there to start it off. Yep. Set the, set the tone. I like it. So a fresh set of downs now for the Blue Devils to begin this opening drive. And that's what you want. You don't want pace and you want continuous plays like that. Yep, they're hustling to the ball. They're not slowing down right now. This is this is all scripted. First drive is always scripted, so they're moving the ball well. These are division rivals here, so don't be surprised to see more chippiness here. Two receivers to the left, one near side on the right. Looks like he made a little audible. They fake the handoff, pass over the middle, and it's going to be caught there and brought down. That's Jalen Wallace, and I'm right near the mark to gain, and it's a, and it's a new first down. Hey, catch and pass, catch and pass. That, that, was, that was a nice find right there. Uh, take, take what's available. I, I like it. Get, get the ball out of your hands quickly. Get it in your athlete's hand. He's out of Bellevue High School here in Michigan. Uh, powerhouse, man. They have had some talented players out in the past few years. And also look at the starting offense again for the Wildcats, in which we'll see here shortly. As we set up here on first down again, pass midfield, Davidson with some more room to run. He continues to move the line down as he is brought down right at the 45 into Wildcat territory. Wow, follow those big boys up front. Look at those. These guys are big, man. This is not a small school, man. These guys are big, and they are intense. These guys were some of the first guys out in the field. And when I say these guys, I'm talking about the offensive line. That is a running back's best friend. And one thing that definitely Avon Mitchell mentioned in the offseason is that we're going to try to create some more tempo out there on the offensive side. They moved Davidson, and now Garner, he's going to run with it. And he's going to gain a few, and he's going to gain a brand new set of downs. Hey, that's smart play right there. That is, uh, you know, that's a veteran move. Know how far you have to get to the first down. These are things that quarterbacks always need to be thinking about. How much time is on the clock? How many timeouts do we have? What down is it? What's the distance? He knew what he had. He took it. Devon Bentley goes to the bench, and out came Logan Taggett, one of the tight ends. He lines up along the line. Now he moves forward. They give it to Davidson. Good to block. the far side. Ran into his own man then for a moment, but he keeps moving forward and he gains about nine. And some more extracurriculars on the outside. And that was Nick Robinette who got into the scrum. John, something tells me, you know, that we might be seeing a, a decent dose of running the, running the rock today. No, definitely. After all those running plays and all the momentum, keep moving forward and nothing going back. That football is going to be on the ground. Yep, look how the offensive line runs to the ball. Love it. That's This is a well-coached team. Back out there is Benley. Davidson to the side. Second down. Garner drops back, and now he's got more room to work with, and Garner falls forward with a brand new first down and nearby the red zone. That's tough to stop. You know, I, we, that's this is not a uh, a light defense here. This is a, these are uh, guys who came back last year. So, uh, but you know, first drive of the season. Anytime you can get momentum like this, get the defense huffing and puffing a little bit. Oh man, that's like that's what you want to see. And a defense last year that held their opponents to 20 points or less throughout the entirety of that season. That's a uh, winning winning calculation right there. Garner, pocket nearly collapsed, keeps moving forward, trying to create some more space. He keeps breaking more tackles, and he moves to the 20. 
call that slippery, slippery. And a good blitz pickup right there by the by the running back. Uh, the pocket collapsed pretty quickly, but you know, any anytime you got uh, a quarterback with the type of talent as Caleb Garner, then uh, the pocket is a theory. You know, let's keep him in the pocket. Yeah, let's, good luck with that. We'll see. That was a game of about seven, so second down and three as the this impressive opening drive continues for the Blue Devils against this Wildcat defense. Fake the handoff to Davidson. Moving to his right. Garner throws it towards the end zone, and it's going to be caught for the touchdown. Devon Bentley and LTU strikes first to open up the season. Great drive. What a great drive, man. I, I mean, he had multiple guys open. They actually brought a corner blitz uh, on that drive and called that a cat blitz. Uh, quarterback didn't see it right away, but found his open man down, down the field, and, and that's what happens when you got a quarterback that can run. You always have to respect it. Defensive backs came up and left him wide open in the back in the end zone. Good block there by Davidson, realizing that corner blitz, and then more movement, and then just threw it up there right as he's being brought down, and right there was Benley to put it into the bread basket. Good awareness. I, I don't know if that was uh, Nick Robinette who almost uh, went up for the ball there, but. There was a flag down on the PTA after it. The kick was good, but we'll see what this flag is. Sitting in the uh, is that touchdown chair, I guess. Never had that when I was in college. So it's a false start against the against the Blue Devils. So it appears that they'll they're going to be coming back to redo the PTA, PAT rather. In the meantime. It's an opening score for the Blue Devils, and that is huge against a team like the Wildcats because they get the opening, they get the opening kickoff, they get the opening drive, and the fact that the running game was there to start it off and get down the field with a lot of momentum and then finish it off with a score, that's just all the momentum you need to start a game like this. You know, Coach Mitchell, I know he's going to have his uh, his game face on right now, but a drive like that to start your season, that's probably the perfect way you could start it's the opening drive that's always a challenge man if, if you get stopped three and out that's hey is this going to be how the season's going but that was great and Devon Bentley starts the season off he's the first one so Vincent Robison to it on his second attempt after the false start nearly got for traffic and it is still good so an incredible Good opening drive via the run game, put on by Garner, by Davidson, and the finish by Devon Bentley. 7-0, Lawrence Tech. Yep, you feel the wind picking up here? We'll see how Indiana Westland responds. No, and they got plenty of good responders, as in their quarterback game, led on by Xander Stokes. Yep, I've been hearing a lot about Xander Stokes. Excited to watch him live. And they still got plenty of backups too, even their, even their second string. Chase Bradman, a senior from Kenwood, Michigan. Still a lot of quarterback talent. And, and like we mentioned earlier, just the veteranness of these seniors coming back after the season that they had last year, that probably motivated them to come back for another year. I mean, think about this, John. Like these guys, he's a fifth year senior. He was there from day one of, of them even having an athletic program, a, a football program. To think about the pride that they have. In this, in this team and where they're coming from, where they did, what they did last year. No, both these programs going into their sixth season as a program, and as we mentioned, Tyler Kolka, the longtime quarterback here at Lawrence Tech, now playing professional up in Japan. Just the fact the veteranness is still there within Indiana Wesleyan. So now it's Marco Matowski, a two-way player, also a member of the men's soccer team here at Lawrence Tech, as the ball falls off the tee. He is a goaltender with a tall frame at 6'4", 200 pounds, but he definitely knows how to kick him long. That's a great place to find a kicker right there. So he's, he's not just doing what most kickers do during practice and kind of sitting there. I'm just kidding. Isaiah Gibbs back deep. This one's a line drive. And it's going to be caught within the end zone. And a good place right there to bring him out of bounds right, right before he does. So it'll be about the 20-yard line in which Indiana Wesleyan will get their first start. 
And that was Neil Campbell on the return as we look at the starting, starting offense for this Wildcat team. Yep, we got Xander Stokes here at quarterback. Uh, Dedarian Williams, he's another one out of uh, transfer, transferred and he's from Florida, went to Mississippi Valley State. You know, so that's a good program there. Uh, we also have a, a running back named Josiah Curry, uh, transferred from Ferris State here in Michigan as well. So Xander Stokes to lead things off. They do, hand, do fake the handoff, and it's just over the outreach of Levi Tidwell. They got so, you on that one, John. Yeah, it did. Faked you. Yeah, it did. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes those fakes really do get the best of everybody, and they were trying to fool that LTU defense, but they sniffed it down. The throw was just a little bit high out of the outreach, and there is a flag down on the play. And it appears to be an ineligible receiver downfield, so that's going to... Not the way that uh, Coach Rohde would want to start, you know, but here's, here's the thing. Coach Rohde is, came from offensive coordinator, Morningside, where they won the national championship. So it looks like they're, again, Lawrence Tech had to prepare by watching Morningside film and uh, Indiana Westland. So you can say run. This time they do hand it off. And it is to Dedarian Williams, and he's going to be brought down for a bit of minimum gain. Interesting here, you see uh, big number 99, Jordan Lewis wagging his finger. He transferred in from Indiana Westland. So uh, I'm sure he's got some buddies on the other side. Redshirt senior this year at six foot, 310 pounds. Big boy. Second and long. Second and 13 to be exact. Showing blitz around the corner. They do break back. Stokes hands it off to Williams. Williams got through two defenders, and he's going to be brought down nearby the 25 for a bit of a good gain right there to set up third and about five. Yeah, that's a good, good play call. Got, got what was available. You know, I always love when running backs fight through tackles. You know, you're expected to make one man miss, but if you can make two man miss, hey, that's a little better, right? So a crucial third down right here. Nothing would be even better for Lawrence Tech to have a quick three and out to, be huge. to squander the Wildcats opening drive. So here we go, play action. Stokes faked one way and he's gonna be brought down. And that is Dante Banton, the leader of the defense. And it's fourth down. Wow. Impressive start, impressive start for Lawrence Tech right there. And Dante Benton, motor, motor, high motor guy, long. Lanky, he's he's fast, man. I call him a a sack specialist. I was watching him in practice and tell you what, man, out of Pompano Beach, Florida. He's got the dreadlocks flowing. That's what I'm talking about. So a quick three and out, just what Lawrence Tech wanted right after an opening drive touchdown. As Nolan Foley, freshman out of Greenwood, Indiana, is gonna send this away and back deep for Lawrence Tech is Jaden Rembert out of West Bloomfield, as we mentioned earlier. Spiraling kick, calls for the fair catch, and it's gonna be brought down right about the 33 yard line. So an opening drive touchdown and a quick three and out. Lawrence Tech so far in main control. And some more quick facts about this great university founded in 1932, just this last year, celebrated 90 years. And this year's enrollment just over that 3000 mark and the motto, there's two actually two mottos to this. There's theory and practice, and also be curious, make magic. And 60 plus clubs and student organizations, this university just continues to grow every single year, earning the leadership of brand new president, Tarek Soap, Dr. Tarek Soap to be exact. Yeah, they're doing the right things here at Lawrence Tech. It's impressive. So Kayla Garner in the offense, looking to strike again and try to make this Wildcat defense really work for it in the early goings. Giving a big cushion down here on number two receiver. Pass. They fake the handoff, Garner back to pass. Pocket collapse, trying to create some running room, and he still does, and he's still on the move. Rulebrook tackle, and he's going to be tripped up and brought down for a gain of about nine, and that's where they will mark him. Man, that is tough for a defense. So I think that was Luke Bays on defense, number five, linebacker. You know, he's junior. Looked like he had him dead to rights, but somehow he slips through. That's it's tough. Hey, what are you going to do? Second and one now. So that's just quick thinking on the part of Gardner. But then pocket collapse just to try to create something out of nothing. So again, the offense trying to move rather quickly. They give it to Bentley. 
who caught the touchdown pass, and he does get the mark to beat, so it'll be a Randy first down. Yep, you can tell these running backs are feeling it, man. That was a good little cutback. I, I maybe would have liked to see a little more burst, but he got the first down. That's all that matters. That was Isaac Abay on the tackle. So the line keeps moving. They use both Garner for his legs, his arm, and also just the running game has just been untouched for right now. Command of the offense, too. I'm seeing, uh, looks like he has good control out there. Man in motion. They do give it to Benley, and Benley with some running space, and he's got another first down. Pass midfield, and again, Lawrence Tech moving into Wesleyan territory. Yeah, good tackle out there. Uh, Robbie Hunter making the tackle at D tackle, uh, and that's what, an eight yard gain? Good give. So that's an RPO, I believe. So run pass option. The quarterback has multiple decisions to make within a half a second time lane, timeline. So now both Davidson and Benley surrounding Gardner. Plenty of running options. They give it to CJ Davidson. Trying to run around the crowd and about no gain right there. Back to the original line of scrimmage. That's, that is a good way to stop the uh, uh, outside zone right there. Basically, you kind of just have to uh, push him to the sidelines. Have him keep pushing him sidelines, make him a horizontal, because that what the running back is looking for is a uh, lane to go north. Put your foot in the ground and burst. Davidson to the sideline. Benley will remain out there. Game remember wide receiver set up to the far side. Two receivers down to the right. Second down and 10. Garner looking to throw, and that one, I believe, was batted down in front, and it came, fell short of Rembert. And while we have a moment, ignite your future at Lawrence Technological University with cutting edge programs, expert faculty, and limitless opportunities. We're shaping tomorrow's leaders. Join us in a journey of discovery and success. Enroll now and let your transformation begin. Learn more at ltu.edu. So first set of long downs for Lawrence Tech here. Third down and 10, they have yet to move within this one sequence into the Wildcat territory. It's like a two tight end set here. Run. They give it to Benley. Mm. Benley trying to create some running room and he's gonna be brought down but for a game of about three. Yeah, you know, that's a field position play. Why, you, know, you might ask yourself, why, why it's third and 10. Why, why do we just run the ball at the middle? Well, let's see what happens here. Looks like they're sending out the punt group. Yeah, they are going to send out the punt unit. So that's a good stop for the Wildcat defense after they let the running game push them down the field in that opening drive. This is a, this you know, if you're Dan Campbell, what do you do here? Lions head coach likes to go for it on fourth down, but I think this is a field position uh, play right here. Punt is possibly the, one of the most important plays in football, kids. Listen up. It's not a playoff. So Carter Dixon looking to pin this deep within. Backing up is Campbell, and he, and he got a cat, fair catch it right about the five, four yard line. There and that is where, that's where the Wildcat offense is gonna take over. Yeah, that's, uh, that's tough. That's a tough field position. Uh, anytime you're trying to get things going as offense, Field position is key, and uh, I'll tell you what, when you're looking at 95 yards and marching down the field, that's uh, hope, hopefully you got, 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 it, got your legs rested on the sidelines here, boys. So a good position punt right there by Dixon, able to back up Campbell to force the fair catch, and good coverage just down the field overall. So Xander Stokes and the Wildcats have a lot of ground to gain, but this is still maintaining a one-score game thanks to their defense. Yeah, good stop by the defense there. Back the handoff. Pass outside and is caught by Levi Tidwell, and he's going to be brought down. Good, good by play. Andrew Perkins. Yeah, good player there. I like it. I like they just want to get they want to get uh, uh, Xander going, you know, and just let's let's get him a, a quick little out route to one of his favorite receivers. Um, get get the yards. Hey man, you're okay. we we got this. So a brand new first down that gives them more room from the four to the 15 yard line. Missed the handoff, pass over the middle and it's gonna be caught by Isaac Smith as he is brought down right around the 44. 
got to feel good for Isaac Smith. He's uh, out of Mich Flat Rock, Michigan, here on high school. Quick, quick offense, not messing around here. Trying to speed up the tempo, trying to catch LTU off guard. A lot of movement. Trying to create a little bit of confusion along that D-line. Stokes is going to hand it off to Isaiah Gibbs, and Gibbs spins his way to about midfield for about a gain of five. And hey, we're seeing a little bit of Coach Rohde's offensive genius there, looking like an Andy Reid offense. All that movement before the, the ball is snapped for an inside zone run. And again, more tempo. And again, they give it to Gibbs. Gibbs trying to push his way forward, and he's going to be marked down just short. And we'll see what they want to do. Get skinny running back. I like it. And they do mark him down a few inches from the mark to gain. So this is going to be third down and a very short one. Yeah, those were both the same exact play from the, from the uh, five men up front. Running back did a good job of getting skinny and uh, getting some yards. Now it's short third and one. The Darian Williams back in. Two receivers set up to the left. High snap. They do give it to Williams, and he is going to be brought down, but he did gain the line to get. So it'll be a brand new first down. Yeah, that was a good tackle there by Thomas Lewis, but he did get the first down. So keep the ball, keep the ball uh, marching down the field, and this is a good drive. Good answer. First time the Wildcats are into Blue Devil territory, and we see what this Indiana Wesleyan team hopes to do, and that is to possibly tie this Stokes back to throw. He's got all kinds of space, and he decides to run for it. He sees the marker, and he does get it. Yep, Stokes can run too. Give him that much space. Hey, I'll take it. Stokes only had one rushing touchdown last year, and that was just great awareness, realizing the space he had and just to go right for the marker. Yeah, you know, sometimes that it, it, it's funny how that works out, right? You, you think he's not going to run it, so you drop everybody back, but then he, then he surprises you. Gets a quick first. A couple more receivers into the contest. Tristan Hayes in as well. Three receivers stacked up to the, le to the left. Stokes again looking to throw. They're going to dump it off and all over it. That was Matt Plaga. And that's a huge loss right there. Out of Hazlitt High School. He read that really well. Anytime you see the defensive line get through the offensive line that quickly. I always tell my guys in high school, hey, D-line, if, if you're getting back that quickly, maybe you should slow down. It might be a screen. Loss of four in that play, second down. Trying to make things a little bit easier. Looked like there was some movement up front, but they do give it to Gibbs, and Gibbs is going to be stopped up. Gains about two, almost to the first start line of scrimmage. But now this is another long third down. They have 11 to go. Yeah, this is the most we've really seen of uh, Lawrence Tech's defense, Indiana Wesleyan's offense, and, you know, Lawrence Tech's defense, they, they're stepping up right here. Didn't start great, but it's not about how you start, it's how you finish. I like the gang tackling. And so far, the clock keeps winding down. We are under 30 seconds left to go in this first quarter of play. And what has been a pretty good start for the home team. Wesleyan trying to even things up. A little bobble, but Gibbs recovers it, and he's going to be off, and he gets the first down. A huge third down conversion, even with a very shaky start. Yeah, I think that was on purpose, right? No, couldn't have been. It worked. And that's how the first quarter is going to come to an end. So a huge third down conversion put on by the Wildcats, and they extend their drive as we go into the start of the second quarter. But a first quarter in which Lawrence Tech had one of the best starts yet. An opening drive touchdown and a quick three and out. But don't sleep on the Wildcats. They will come back before you even know it. Yeah, they're a good team. They're, they are a good team, so Lawrence Tech can't, can't sleep now. And just like that, we'll be coming right back for the start of the second quarter. 7-0 Lawrence Tech. Because every athlete deserves to be treated like a pro. Henry Ford Sports Medicine. From our very first breath, curiosity is why we question everything. 
through barrages of whys and how comes, it now needs the tools to will its vision into existence. Tools that allow curiosity to blur the line between technology and magic. Be curious. Make magic. The College of Engineering at Lawrence Technological University. Back here in Blue Devil Stadium, Lawrence Tech getting off to a very good start against one of their top conference rivals in Indiana Wesleyan in front of a white out crowd. Full house here at Blue Devil Stadium. This is what the campus wants every single time. And that's what their team is basically giving them, an opening drive touchdown, and they have held them to just that. But the Wildcats are knocking on the door. Yep, marching down the field. This has been a great drive. You know, when you run the ball like Lawrence Tech do, did in that first quarter, the field, the um, ball possession, uh, the clock marches down the, ticks down. Sorry, guys. Game one. That's okay, partner. <laughs> Game one is always exciting. We're always excited. Man in motion to the far side. Three receivers stacked up to the right. Stokes is looking to throw. He's got a man open in the middle. There's a flag down as Levi Tidwell goes in for the touchdown. But we'll see. I think this one's going to be brought back. That was two seniors knowing how to play football. What they did was a hot route. And now it appears that this penalty is going to be waved off. Very interesting how this one goes out. And yep, they picked up the flag. So that, so now it's a PAT away from tying this thing up. So the Wildcats, after Isaiah Gibbs, converted on third and 11, one play into the second quarter. And now they're going to tie things up here. Yeah, that looked like Lawrence Tech blitzed a couple people. And uh, all, what Levi Tidwell did was he replaced the blitzers. And, and what that means is that space where they are blitzing from is going to be wide open. And the quarterback just throws it right there. Um, Got to get it out, out of your hands quickly, but that's a veteran play there by those two gentlemen. It almost seemed like they were going to call the flag on Isaiah Courtois, the right tackle, but they decided to pick it up and let it go. So now Josh Clifton is going to put it through. Got around, looked very high, but it's good. So we got an even ball game, 7-7. Seven to seven. And Wesleyan, give them all the credit. They decided to come back as we look at this last play right here. Look at all the receivers stacked up to the right. That gave plenty of throwing options. Yeah, so you see how the middle of the field is wide open, and, and that's because you're sacrificing space. You're sacrificing um, valuable space anytime you blitz somebody. And uh, you know, a smart receiver can see that. Usually there's some hot routes drawn into every single play, and with the offense coordinator, or head coach slash offense coordinator like Coach Rohde, uh, you're gonna be ready for something like that. You know, So high risk, high reward, this game of football, and just a lot of things to learn as this is a very young team for Lawrence Tech. Yeah, young, but you know what? Coach Mitchell, he has done a great job. When he came into this program is, you know, interesting years, 2020. But I'll tell you what, at practice, I can, I can tell that they are very organized. They got things moving together. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to see how they answer here. Tied ball game, only, that only took four seconds. Only four seconds off the clock to begin this second quarter after LTU had majority of control in that first quarter. Must so, have been a flag. So there must have been a flag outside of the PAT to give positioning to Wesleyan right at midfield. So Clifton is going to try to do his best to pin them deep. Broden and Bentley are back deep for Lawrence Tech. And they're going to soft kick it, and they're going to blow this play dead. Interesting call on this. And it looks like they're going to restart it. Hey, it's ref's first game, too. So we're going to redo the kick from midfield. Wouldn't be surprised if you see that again. You know, if you're kicking, if you're kicking off from the 50-yard line, it's not really much that can go wrong if you do a squib. Uh, Potentially, what could happen is, is the ball gets into one of the upbacks' hands. They're usually not as comfortable or used to running the football. Maybe there's a fumble. So again, we try once more. A soft kick. 
Right line drive into the hands of Christian Broden. Broden slipped a bit, trying to find some more space, and he's going to be gobbled up, trying, refusing to go down, but he is going to be brought down. Right back at the eight-yard line. Very difficult field position there. Yeah, so they could have just kicked that ball uh, out of the end zone. Ball would have been on the, what, 25-yard uh, line. But instead, now it's on the, looks like, 13, 14-yard line. So they did gain some possession on that in terms of the yards. That was Wilson Wireball, who was all over the coverage. So now furthest distance for the Blue Devil offense to start out. Got yeah, one, one tight end, one running back out here. Plenty of offensive weapons this Blue Devils team has. Garner gives way to Davidson. Davidson trying to run for traffic. Still trying to push forward. All of his momentum will get him a gain about three. Way to follow your big boys up front. Griffin Peacock, Jr. Ryan Barrel, sophomore. We got, did you know that one of the offensive linemen's from Hawaii? Brandon Sua? Number 79, good blocking up front. So about second down and seven. It's just important that this Lawrence Tech team just keeps the ball moving. Garner gives it away to Davidson again, and he's gonna be brought down immediately, probably lost a yard, and he, he's gonna be brought down efficiently by that Wildcat offense. And while we have a moment, we send it down to the field with an update. Here's Elizabeth Kuhn. Liz? LTU captains this year include C.J. Davidson, who was a 2022 All-MSFA Midi second team pick, joined by Dante Baton, who earned a second team all-conference last season, Andrew Perkins and Christian Broden, also key members of this team. Coach Mitchell said that these leaders are really the heart and soul of this team. They've grown with the program, been through ups and downs, and really drive forward the culture. John? Thank you, Liz. And there is the leadership that, that goes through all the years, even after when Tyler Kolka was graduating. They lost a lot of seniors last year to last year's team. It's just leadership follows through in the best of ways. And now third down, seven. They give it. And that ball came loose. It's a fumble. It's still loose on the ground. It's going to be picked up by Neil Campbell. And it goes in for the scoop and score. Sometimes you just got to be in the right place at the right time. Wow, turn of events there. Trying to look here, ran into two of his own defenders, and then right there, that hit, that one knocked the ball loose. And there, therefore, two linemen trying to cover over it. Ball then squirted free, and then right there was Campbell to pick it up. Yeah, it looked and like two linebackers, Clayton Mosier, Luke Bays, had him wrapped up. I always teach my, my guys in high school, hey, punch that ball out, punch the ball out. If, if you got him wrapped up. So now Clifton puts in the point after. And now Wildcats are on top. Momentum. Found themselves trailing for a bit, but I think it was just a bit of a wake-up call for Andrew Rohde and his squad to try to get things back into the swing of things. Yeah, well, and anytime your defense scores, that helps out the offense. Um, you know, and that, and that field position right there, that penalty, that cost them. You know, that's why you, you got to keep your head on straight. Can't make uh, you know poor poor penalties like that, and uh, you know ball security, ball security. If you look at statistics um, on who wins games, turnover battle is key. Usually, the teams who have the mo have more turnovers are going to win the game. And that is one thing which Avon Mitchell mentioned. We got to win. We got to win the turnover battles. We got to limit our mistakes because Indiana Wesleyan is a team that will not make many especially with a brand-new head coach of Andrew Rohde's caliber. Yep, he's got to like the way his team's been responding here. So they scored two touchdowns in the second quarter. Two touchdowns, and we're all not even halfway through this, all within a two-minute margin. So now the offense for Lawrence Tech will get another chance, and Clifton will, go, will, will send us away from the original start. This one's headed. And therefore is Broden, and he drops it, and it rolls out of bounds. Ooh. Yep. Critical error there. I don't know if the sun got into his eyes. Looks like the sun's still kind of peeking through here, but it's and a it tough went, one. Went out of bounds right at the five-yard oh, line. So again, another tough field position start for Lawrence Tegan. 
And that one was just a muff right there by Christian Broden, one of the captains, as we just mentioned. Yeah, you know, I would like to say, uh, you know, hey, hang on to the football, man. I, I've never made a mistake like that, but I, uh, I have fumbled a, a kickoff return before at Hawaii. It was not fun because uh, usually when you're doing a kickoff return, it means you just got scored on. So uh, this is a tough field position again on the five-yard line. So Garner is going to hand things off, and a good gain of about three. And that, that was Bren Britton, Ben Britton rather, on the carry. So they've used four different running backs to start off this one. They got a stable, stable of running backs. It's a beautiful thing. Fresh legs. Britton stays out there along with Devon Bentley. A little bit of confusion about the setup right there around Garner. Yeah, you know, anytime you rotate guys in, it can be confusing, but. Throw in there, and that one's going to be caught by Wallace, and he gains a good chunk of yards right there, and he's going to be marked about a yard short. Yeah, that looked, that looked almost like it was supposed to be a run, but he actually... Pulled it real quick, got the ball out of his hands as quickly as possible. I think if, if he let him a little more, that might have been got some extra yards there. But, hey, third, third and short. Benley sent off. Britton to stay on. Two receivers stacked up to the right. Third down and one. Wildcats looking for another quick three and out. And they give it to Britton, and he's going to move forward, and he does gain the yard to gain. And it's going to be a brand new first down. Got the first. Five foot eight, 180. Five foot eight, you might think, uh, you know, not very big, but 180. He's, he's, he's packing a punch there. He can get that tough yardage. You know, some people almost might want to say if you, weigh, if you weigh light, you can easily bounce off people to keep your momentum going forward. Yeah, you know, hey, some, uh, pinball, this is the game of football. I love it. You can be any shape or size, doesn't matter. Mostly about heart. So from the 15, Garner looking to throw, moving to his right, looking for a man open. He goes down the sideline, and that one's going to go way out of bounds. It was aiming for Nick Robinette, a junior out of Gladwin. Yeah, you know, that's actually a smart play. You know, you always want to try to complete the ball, and, and we want to get yardage. But personally, for me, I like seeing that out of my quarterback, know when to throw the ball, ball away, live to fight another down. You know, that's, that's maturity there. So now another double down on the running backs, Devon Benley and Ben Britton. Second down, again from the 15. Fake the handoff, quick pass out, lost that footing right there was Wallace and could not hold in the catch. Yeah, it looks like he, he, he may have just lost his, his footing there. It's an interesting play. It looked like it was man coverage. Didn't have a blocker out there. Might have been better that he, he didn't catch it, but hey, 11 minutes ago, third and 10. Long setup right here on back-to-back -back passing plays after they really went to the run game early to start this one. Now they're trusting more of the arm of Caleb Garner. Moving again to his right. And he's going to be stopped up, nearly kept his feet up, but he is brought down immediately by Isaac Abeo. Great play. Great play by Isaac Abeo there, senior, senior leader on the defense, doing what he's supposed to do. So they, they again, they brought a blitz from the opposite end, and they, did, they rolled out to, to the quarterback's right. Anytime you got a running uh, quarterback, you're going to want to get, get him in space, get his feet moving, but uh, you got to block the edge. Got to get, got to block the edge there. Didn't see if it was uh, running back or tackle who, who missed that. But great play by Isaac. So the defense has scored, and now they've made a stop. And now Carter Dixon will try to send this one back deep. Low snap, able to get it off. High punt. Waiting for it is Campbell, and he's going to bring it in into traffic, and a big hit put on. There's a flag in the backfield. As Tanner Carlson. Was able to put one, put a big hit on him. Yeah, it's like a dream come true. Flag was thrown about the 
26-yard line. We'll see if this is going to be brought back or if it's going to be against the Wildcats. Holding. Yeah. And so LTU does catch a break, and they will regain their possession on the offense. That was scary. That was almost blocked. Um, and the ball nearly came out on that big hit. And good, give credit to Campbell right there, just to be able to maintain it. Yeah, all you kids out there, you know, that's a good form tackle. Kept his eyes up, wrapped up. It's a big explosion, but you always want to wrap up there. And I think that actually happened because of the um, amount of time that the ball was in the air and the wind. So that was a difficult punt to catch. So that penalty will move Lawrence Tech to midfield and keep their offensive drive going. Correction, the possession did change, but the penalty did move them back from the catch position. So Xander Stokes and the Wildcats looking to strike once more after one offensive score and a defensive score. They give it to Dedarian Williams. He gets around one tackle and he's brought down and another flag goes out. Great pull, great pull by the center there. And it appears that this play will be coming backwards in the direction of Indiana Wesleyan. Wow, holding, you know, that's unfortunate. Uh, what I saw in that play, I saw two pullers, one of them being big number 63, Will Angel. And man, did he look like an angel on that. He is a center. If you can pull with a center, I mean, you gotta be an athlete and uh, that's a running backs like seeing those big boys in front of them. They called the hold on 41, Tristan Hayes. Tight end. They give it to Williams again, yeah. and that time he's going to be stocked up even further out. Got Jordan Lewis, Lake Orion product. It's good swarm tackling there. Lewis was all over it. And so, and defense, right after their offensive score, they're able to get a quick three and out. So now this is doing them a huge favor. If they're able to stop them on another three and out here. Second down and 20. A lot of movement. Keep defense on their toes. Flag to start off. This appears to be going against the Wildcats. Offsides, game one. Second penalty against Indiana Wesleyan on this one drive. And now they're going to have even more ground to gain. Yeah, you know, all that movement before the snap, that's that, that's interesting. A lot of these guys are starting to do this more. We're starting to see it more. And there's a couple of things that it does. It keeps the defense on their toes. And as a quarterback, you, you can start to see what the defense is in. You'll be able to find out, are they in man? Are they blitzing somebody? Make them show their hand. So now second down and 25. Stokes, take the handoff, throw down there. That's Caden Curry, and he's going to be shoved out of bounds right about the 45-yard line. And that's a huge game right there to gain some more with third down coming up. Yep, that was a good game, Chuck Yards, but still it's a third and 13, looks like. Marked him down at the 46. So this will be third down and 14, a long third down. They've Able to convert on third and 11 via Isaiah Gibbs. They're going to give it to Darian Williams. Williams trying to use his legs. He's able to cut around one man, and he's going to be brought down right at the opposite 45. And that was that was Chris Roden again. Good run. Roden also registers as a cornerback. Yeah, that's some tough yardage, but look, it's fourth and four. It looks like they're keeping the offense out there. Let's go. This is a huge play right here to try Kick to continue this drive. Might possibly set up for a fake here. Trying to get him to jump. Little jump movement up there on the D-line. Clock winding down inside seven. We'll see what they try to do. They do give it to Will. And Stokes is going to hold on to it. And he is going to be stuffed up in the backfield. And that is Devin Isaac. The junior brings him down, and it's going to be a turnover on downs. Lawrence Tech takes over in midfield. Smart play by Devin Isaac. Stayed home. Stayed home. Let's see here. Not going to think he's going to pull it, but he does. 
And right there was Isaac sniffing out the fake. And, you, and we saw it earlier before the ball was snapped. They were trying to pull the defense offside before that stat was going off. It's an old school fashion play that we see more and more now on, on long third down, fourth down conversions. Yeah, you know, I mean, that, that goes to show uh, good coaching on both sides. Uh, offense, hey, let's let's sprint to the ball. Make them think that we're going to snap it. Get them off sides. And then uh, LTU, hey, to have the awareness, you know, only four 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 yards. If we go off sides, they're going to try to uh, they'll get the first. Well played. So now Garner, fake the handoff to Davison. Garner looking downfield, and he's got his man. That's Jaden Rembert, and Rembert's going to be shoved out of bounds for a brand new gain of yards. And while we have a moment. Join us on campus September 9th for the Fall Semester Grand Prix hosted by the Blue Devil Motorsports. The free event will take place from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. There will be a DJ and food trucks on location. For more information, check out ltu.edu forward slash motorsports. So a huge gain there by Rembert. And Lawrence Tech trying to even things up here in the second quarter. Wildcats have scored twice within two minutes worth. Davidson. Bouncing off of bodies, and he's going to be brought down right at the original line of scrimmage. And it's going to be second down and 10. I'm really liking what I'm seeing from the offensive line. You know, they are they are staying on their man, and they're they're taking them where, where they're going. You know, uh, sometimes on the zone, it's a, it's a patience by the running back and setting up for the offensive line, and it, it can be a long block. Didn't get many yards there, but hey, the defense has to has – to, uh, has to respect it, has to respect the run here. Especially his respect the run of C.J. Davidson who continues to go through all of his defenders. So now Garner drops back, finds a man. That one's tipped up, it's up for grabs and it's incomplete. That one was intended for Mauricio Jenkins but it was over his back shoulder and that one was up for grabs. Yeah, we'll see number seven, defensive end, Kayla Williams get the pressure there. And right, and right before that pass came down, Preston Sykes almost had an opportunity to take that ball away. Kay, Kayla Williams out of Farmington Hills Harrison. John Harrington, one of the greatest to do it. So third down here, crucial play. Davidson, he's stuffed up and he's be brought down. No gain on one of either of those three, three plays right there. And it's gonna be fourth down and out comes the punt team. Yeah, looked like they were marching the ball down the field there, but good stop by the defense. And again, this is a field position game. It's only it's 14-7. Close game. Let's pin them deep. And that's what Carter Dixon plans to do. He last time in this precarious in this particular position, he was able to pin them inside the 10. And that is what you want out of your punters. A great punter can be a weapon for any team. Mm. They're not getting much on it. That one's just spinning up in there and takes a friendly bounce, but it's going to go sideways and it's going to be pinned right at the 27 yard line. So not much on that kick, but the Wildcats are going to take over on the field on offense. Yeah, that's a tough one. That's tough. You know, about a 10 yard gain there. See what. Uh, See what Xander has to do out here. So under six minutes left to go. 14-7 uh, game. Still a very close game. And this is what we saw from Lawrence Tech the last time these two teams matched up last year. Basically kept with them throughout the first, first three quarters. And then two late touchdowns was able to seal a deal. Stokes, that Ooh. pass is knocked down. Wow. Beautiful coverage. Put on right there by Matt Plaga again. There was some serious pressure there. And you know what? At practice, I really like number 55, Kamon White. He fires off the ball. Defensive lineman there for Lawrence Tech. I haven't seen him out there yet today, but young kid, nasty. So another second down play here. Stokes, he's going to give it to Williams this time. Williams trying to push things forward, and he does. And a good gain of about six. Good tough run. Ben Zebarth leading the way, number 57. So that was a gain of about five, third down here. Indiana Westland, they, 
This is a fast tempo offense. They're looking at their wrists. Looks like uh, they're calling a number and running the play. Two receivers stacked up to the right. They're showing pressure on that defense. Defense wanted a flag and they're gonna get one as they got the offensive line moving and they will call it. It's so hard for an offensive lineman. I mean, think about it. You're, you're sitting there, you're basically like a sitting duck. These guys are coming at them at you full speed. They lift weights. They're not, they're no spring chickens. I mean, this is it's hard, guys. So that's gonna back them up. Third down and ten here. Same particular uh, position of situation as Lawrence Tech within their last drive. Not many yards gained within the first of the three plays. And now this sets up even more yardage. Two receivers stacked up to the right. Stokes has got a good arm and good accuracy. Drops back. He's got a man on the far side. That's Williams who was out of position and he's gonna gain the first down and the line keeps moving for the Wildcats. Yeah, he likes Williams a lot. You can tell he's a key part of their offense today. Probably will be the whole season. Fast, no messing around. That time he just dropped out of his running back spot, just faded out to the to the left and was open right there. And they're gonna give it to him. Yeah, hurry up. Hurry Got it broke up. through a couple of tackles and he's gonna gain a good chunk, about five. Wow. I mean, the ref was barely even out of the way there. This is a fast offense. They are looking to add on quickly. Let's go again. Even though we have four and a half minutes left to go in this first half, Stokes. Goes to the far sideline. He's got Tidwell. And Tidwell is going to be shoved out of bounds at the 35. And yeah, the Lawrence, offense keeps moving. Lawrence Tech might want to think about taking a timeout here. Look at the defensive line. They're gassed. They weren't even, they're not even getting down in a three point stance. It's when you know you got them on offense. Avon Mitchell standing right next to the official. And they're going to keep on moving with Williams. And he's going to gain another set of four. You see him rotating almost every single play. You got to do that in the trenches. It's a it's a fight every play. It is exhausting. Moving quick again. And now Yvonne Mitchell will call a timeout. First timeout taken by either side in this first half to give his defense a breather. As you, as you said it, the Wildcats, they were just marching down the field and give all the credit to Lawrence Tech within the first half, able to stabilize that offense because they weren't moving this quickly back in the first first quarter. Yeah, Lawrence Tech started out hot. You know, uh, they got, obviously we've seen it so far, what, 10, 15, 30 running backs out there? I don't know, it's 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 a lot. And anytime you can keep, keep those legs fresh, you gotta you gotta count quarterback as a, as a runner too. And But hey, uh, give Indiana Westland credit. Uh, offense scored quickly in the, in the first quarter and then uh, uh, Defensive score now it's 14 to seven and they're moving the ball down the field. You know, I'd say this is a pretty evenly matched game so far. I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing. Very evenly matched and just crucial plays and crucial stops when it's been needed. Despite any turnovers, despite what the score may tell you and despite all the plays that have happened, both these teams are really grinding it out to, to stop the big plays from happening. Yeah, this is, this is going to be an important uh, possession here. Second down, about six. We got three minutes, 40, 46 seconds to go. Uh, you're Lawrence Tech down by seven. You're up by, you're up by seven if you're Indiana Westland. It's important if you can, if you can go into the half with another uh, touchdown here. That's going to be tough coming back. They're getting the ball in the second half, I think. So after the quick break for the, uh, for the defense, Stokes. Takes the hand off, a little play action. He's got a man wide open. Darian Williams puts it in for the touchdown. One play after the break, and the Wildcats extend to a two score. Key phrase there, one play after the break. When you've got an offensive uh, wizard over there on the other sidelines, then you're gonna draw something up like this. Look, this is called a, a, a wheel route. So running back gets a little fake, Pretend like, hey, the coach might even tell you, do a bad fake. Because we want, we want the defense to think that, hey, you knew you were getting a fake. Nothing's going to happen. They're going to forget about you. Well, hey, wide open. Easy trot in the end zone. So now Clifton to put in the point after. And he does so. 21-7, 3.37 left to go. Lawrence Tech, who was in full command within the first quarter, but all defense and offensive movement for Indiana Wesleyan 
to really march things down and take full command within this second quarter. Yep, great, great opportunity here for uh, Caleb Gardner. And we want to remind you folks that coming up at halftime, the Blue Devil Marching Band, and also a quick word from Coach Yvonne Mitchell and so more, so stick around. Yeah, it's a great opportunity for Caleb Gardner here. Uh, you know, we've obviously been talking a lot about their running game, but you're down by 14. There's only three minutes, 37 seconds to go in the half, and you got to get points on the board. Even three, three would be good, but uh, if you can get six, that'd be great. So, hey, you got to let loose, let the ball in the air a little bit, stop the clock if it's a, if it's a uh, incompletion. But you still have two timeouts. Big test for the uh, for the young man. All it took was just one quarter, and then Andrew Rohde's team really yeah. started to wake up and started more work cohesively in order to stop the run game and also limit the passing game too. Yeah, I mean, hey, that that first uh, touchdown in the second quarter was uh, was quick, but 21 points in one quarter is tough. So Ben Lee, he's gonna run with it, and he is gonna be stuffed up and brought down immediately. And a few more extracurriculars afterwards. Benley having some words. And he's going to be brought away by his teammates. Cannot afford to have any more penalties throughout the remainder of this first half. As Lawrence Tech is going to take over right about the 14-yard line. Yeah, cooler heads will prevail. It's tough, you know. These are rivals here. And, uh, you know, would have liked to get a little better return there. The coach in me is... Uh, a little upset. I want it, I want you to get north, man. Get get vertical. That's you got to get as many yards as you possibly can on there. Just the coverage downfield was right there within an instant, and Benley really didn't have that much of a chance. Chance that he's talking over with his head coach. Yep, I'm sure Coach Mitchell saying, "Hey, man, catch the ball on the run. Let's get north." So Gardner trying to make something out of nothing, able to escape, and he's going to keep on running forward, and he's going to gain about six and on a busted play right there. Yeah, you know, I saw Jaden Jaden Rembrandt. Uh, uh, get deep uh, there, but unfortunately the pressure forced Caleb Garner out, out of the pocket. He couldn't find him. But hey, he made a smart play, got out of bounds, got some yards, six yards. Gain about five to be exact. That's where they mark him. So a lot of, ground, a lot of ground to gain, but plenty of time to at least cut it in half. Garner faked the throw. Pocket collapsing. Garner keeping the play alive. He's got Froed in the middle, and he's got his man in Jalen Wallace for a first down. <laughs> wow. That what, was great pocket what, presence. Great awareness, even with the pocket collapsing around, just to keep the play alive and then find Wallace right in the middle of the field. Yeah, just thought, great awareness. I thought they had him about four times there. G got out, kept the ball alive, Didn't knew where the line of scrimmage was, stayed behind it, found his man, got a first down. Clock keeps winding down. We're approaching about 2.30 left. Garner again drops back. They brought a bit of a blitz. Four-man rush, and he's going to be brought down. Kept his feet up, and but he's going to be brought down. I think they're actually going to mark him down where his knee kept, came down right back at the 18-yard line. That's a huge loss. Hmm. Yeah, I thought maybe he kept his feet, but... You know, he's such, an at, he's such a good athlete, you, you, you never know with him, but that's tough. Hey, good penetration by the defense there. Isaac Abio again, or Abeo again. Robbie Hunter, Caleb Williams. They, they know what's going to happen. It's a pass. This is like a defensive line's dream, you know. Getting a sprinter stance and try to get that quarterback. Second down and 22, a loss of 12. Garner, a little floater, and that one's going to be caught by Davidson, and he's going to gain it right back to the original line of scrimmage, and then some about 3-4. So right there at the 33-yard line. Smart call right there. Hey, you know, your, your defensive line is uh, is beating our O-line right now. We're going to let you have it. We're going to do, do a little screen pass, get to our running back and get some yards. So now it's a more manageable third down. Lawrence Tech has converted on a couple of third downs in crucial scenarios. This is more crucial right here as we approach a minute left. Stacked. Yep. Stacked. Here comes the blitz. Again, they're going to float it off, and that one's batted away. A great awareness play by Drake Deshetsky. That was a great play. Sometimes you just got to be in the right place at the right time. Got his hand in there. 
I saw that blitz coming. Anytime you have a safety stacked over top of a linebacker, you can expect blitz coming there. So just great awareness right there. The junior out of North Ranch, Michigan, Deshetsky, was able to just knock it out. And so now Corey Dixon has been asked to come out and try to put this one deep. Did not get much on his last attempt. Yeah, you know, I'm curious. They got two returners. I'm wondering if that's because of wind. But anytime you got another returner out there, you're sacrificing another blocker. And it's going to be Campbell who nearly lost it. And all over that coverage was Bodie Thomas. Ooh, that was a close one there. I'm sure uh, the Blue Devils would have liked to have that. But he maintained possession and got 49 seconds to go. I think they're just going to run it out on the clock out. Might as well a couple of plays to see what they try to do. Either they try to march down the field to get one more possible score, or they try to run out the clock. We shall see. Stokes and the Wildcat offense in this second corner has taken huge control. Mm -hmm. And the defense played a huge part in it. A couple of great stops and one defensive score to, to, to contribute. Stokes going to the air, pocket collapsing around him. He's going to move forward, and he's going to take a huge hit. And that one was a beautiful hit. Matt Plaga. Matt Plaga, he's been all over the place. But the offense, like they've always been doing, just giving up tempo, and they're going to give it to Williams. And he's going to move forward, and he's going to gain the first down. And they're going to stop the clock with 28 seconds. And some guys were slow to get up. Timeout. And timeout was called, and it was called by Indiana Wesleyan and Andrew Rohde. So first timeout used by the Wildcats. And with 28 seconds remaining, what do you think they probably got to call up here? You know, I, I'm thinking he's they, – they were going to see how those first two plays went. Uh, based off of that, they got a first down, call a timeout. They still have two timeouts left. They've been marching the ball down the field. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go for it. Um, you know, maybe a deep ball, keep him honest. If they don't get it, then you can always run screen. Um, but, hey, you know what, credit to uh, Lawrence Tech making that first stop. But, you know, when you make a big play, you got to remember, let's get back, let's get back set. I, I know you're excited. I know it's game one and the crowd's going crazy, but, but – you know, we got too excited there. And then, uh, you know, Indiana Westland, they, they've been doing this all game. They've been going uh, high tempo, and, and they got them, got them, uh, got them sitting there uh, just talking instead of uh, getting in their stance and ready to play. Sun is going down. The lights have been on for the majority of this one, and we'll definitely be under the lights as the time goes on. The wind has definitely been picking up. It has played a factor a bit. So we'll see what Andrew Rohde has in store for this first down play as they do have – Receivers stacked up on both sides. Very wide alignment there. A lot of weapons for Stokes to use, and he plans to use one of them to his advantage. Mm -hmm. In the middle of the field, and he's got his man in Isaac Smith. Smith refusing to come down, and he will right at the 30. And that's a huge gain. And the, again, the offense trying to work quickly, but Andrew Rohde is going to use another timeout. They're going to try to score again on this one drive before the half, try to make this really out of reach. Yeah, how many games did they win in a row last year? They yeah. won seven straight in conference play. That means they, they know what to do with the football. You know, great play by Xander Stokes, hit, hitting one of his favorite targets. And, and again, you know, I'm always looking, at, if, I, if I'm on defense, I'm looking at pre-snap alignment. You know, if the receivers are spread really wide, then may, maybe I can, I can anticipate something. Maybe they're trying to set me up. They're trying to do something on the inside. And I saw pre-snap, we they're really spread out wide, and that's a seam route. Tough, tough to cover if you're Thomas Lewis. You know, he, he, it, it is what it is sometimes, you know. You can't, you can't guard everything. Isaac Smith with only a second catch of the game. 20 seconds remain. That only took up eight seconds. So that's a fast-acting play that just happened. And then Rody was right there to call the timeout. One timeout remaining. So you think you probably have, like, maybe two or three plays to get it in the end zone right here. Yeah, yeah, at least. At least, you know, and and when you got a fifth-year uh, senior quarterback here, he's he's a, he's a grown man. He's a grown man. Not everybody here it might be 18-year-olds out there if you're a freshman, and you know he's smart enough. He knows spike the ball, stop the clock. So we'll see here. Three receivers stacked up to the right. 
Now they have one in motion. That's Smith. Moves now to the far side. Stokes looking right at him. And the throw appeared to be low and it's incomplete. So that throw was actually behind Isaac Smith and really low. And now with 16 seconds remaining, it's going to be second down. Yeah, you know, sometimes these these coaches like to do something like that, just a quick, de didn't really no harm, no foul there, only took up four seconds. If they would have got it, you know, chunked off a, a couple yards, but they would have, the clock would have been going. So, um, you know, not always the worst thing in the world to, to drop something like that and uh, see what we got here. So again, Smith out there to the far side, two more receivers stacked up to the right, Stokes. Fake the handoff on play action. He's got a man open, and there is Isaac Smith. Smith is brought down at the two-yard line, and the offense is going to rush it. Clock winding down, man. and Andrew Rohde does appear, and yes, he will call his final timeout. Correction, it's actually Lawrence Tech who's going to take a timeout, but what a huge gain right there. Stokes and Isaac Smith on the connection twice in back-to-back -back plays and able to put them in scoring position with nine seconds left to go. Yeah, thread the needle, that was nice. And it almost looked the, like the exact same play as earlier. Um, seam route, put it where only his, his receiver could catch it. He almost fell into the end zone too. Two defenders were able to bring him down right before he crossed the goal line. And now they are two yards away from going up to a three score lead. That would be that would be tough. That would be a tough one for uh, Lawrence Tech. You know they've played too good of a, a first half to uh, to let this one slip right here. But so much so the first quarter alone, just an opening drive touchdown, then a quick three and out. But then towards the end, we saw the offense of the Wildcats march down the field and then start off the second quarter with a one play into the end zone, and then the defense yeah. really contributed right there. A couple of huge stops, and then a defensive score on a turnover fumble. I mean, everything just had to click right after that first quarter. Yeah, I mean, those first two touchdowns, they happened so quickly. And, you know, it's it, it's one of these things where if you're Lawrence Tech, hey, don't freak out, don't don't get too nervous. We're, we're only down by seven, but if you look at it now, down by 14, and looks like Indiana Western still has another timeout here. And, uh, yeah, they're not slowing up. Both teams have one timeout remaining, but this is, this could be a crucial end to this first half. Play clock down to five. Stokes faked one way, flag on. And the throw is going to be caught by Williams for the touchdown. We're going to see where this flag is at. The flag came from the far judge on the far side corner of the end zone. We're going to see. And it's going to be against Lawrence Tech, so the so touchdown wow. will count. Wow, that was a statement. Look at this play; it's a great play. Hey, you got to respect the run when you're that close. Didn't even didn't even go the right way. I don't know if uh, the running back just did that on purpose because he knew he had to get in the end zone. But that's tough to cover if you're a linebacker. You know, running backs we do that these one on ones against linebackers in uh, practice. Anytime you got open space like that. Not much you can do if you got a quarterback who can throw. So now Josh Clifton will put in the extra point. And he's good there. So a three score lead. What a statement put on by Indiana Wesleyan within this final drive under a minute just for them to march down the field like that and Man. put it up right before the half. You know, uh, I, I, what I like the most actually so far out of Indiana Wesleyan is they didn't panic at all. All the first quarter ended. It was seven to zero. It, doesn't it seem like a totally different ball game? I mean, they didn't have a point in the first quarter. But look at the difference between these these uh, offenses. If if we look at the time of possession, I almost guarantee you that Lawrence Tech has a, a longer time of possession because they've been running the football. The clock keeps going. It's methodical. Whereas on the opposite end, Indiana or yeah, uh, Indiana Westland, they, they've been. Uh, just quick tempo, tempo, throwing the ball and uh, getting points on the board. And that's where really you have to think if you're an offensive coordinator or head coach. Time of possession, you want to win that, but yet you really don't want to have that as your biggest enemy. Yeah. Because as that clock keeps winding down, you're not having a lot of time left for yourself in case of a scenario like this. Now down by three scores. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's uh, anytime you're running offense, 
it's it's tough when when you get down because then you got to throw the football in the air and uh, we'll see though. They've been able to sniff out Caleb Gardner. They've been able to sniff out Davidson and all amongst the other running games. It's a short kick. In comes Broden. Five seconds remaining. We'll see if they can try Ooh. to make something happen. But nothing is going to stop that wall as Indiana Wesleyan came through with a big punch, especially of how they ended it. And it's a three-score lead to end this first half. And Chris Christian Broden came up. He's choking up. He took a huge hit by a trifecta of players, and he's being helped off. Yep, going into half here. You know, uh, what's the coach say? I mean, you know, hey, guys, we got to keep going. Keep our heads focused and uh, don't panic too much, but we gotta put, they got to get some points on the board. we got to find out how. And we hope the best for Christian Broden, one of the captains of this team and their main return man and a cornerback. He knows how to lead, and so everybody, everybody is all hoping for the best. So Lawrence Tech, after having a very dominant First, first quarter and now find themselves trailing and now we send it down to the field. Standing by with head coach Yvonne Mitchell is Elizabeth Kuhn. Liz? Hey guys, we're here with Coach Mitchell. Offensively and defensively, what adjustments do you want to see moving into the second half? Uh, we've got to stop their big plays, number one. I think we had a very good drive coming out of starting the game out there. They made a few adjustments. we got to adjust a few things on our side. Um, but the biggest thing is um, minimizing the big plays for our defense and also minimizing the um, negative plays for our offense like that. Those things, controlling the, um, the, the field position, you know, and we got, can't let them flip the field on us either. Yeah, and heading into the locker room, what's going to be the message? Um, biggest thing is just, again, one play at a time. You know, they're getting, they're getting the ball coming out, so we got to get a stop. That's the first thing we need to do, get a stop on defense and then kind of readjust and, and reset offensively. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys. All right, we'll be right back after this break. From our very first breath, curiosity is why we question everything. Through barrages of whys and how comes, it now needs the tools to will its vision into existence. Tools that allow curiosity to blur the line between technology and magic. Be curious, make magic. The College of Business and Information Technology at Lawrence Technological University. At Michigan First Mortgage, we believe a home is more than just four walls. It's endless possibilities, where relationships are strengthened and next steps are taken. It's a place to call your very own, where you can create new traditions and welcome family with open arms. And at Michigan First, it's at the heart of everything we do. Let us help you discover the possibilities of home.
band is up in the direction of Anthony Case, by director Brian Lowen, percussion director Richard Case, drum tech Randy Marley, color guard instructor Alex Murray, and drum major Ellen Thorsby. Stay up to date with the LTU Marching Band, ltu.edu slash band. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and our YouTube for the LTU Marching Band.
everybody for the second half right here on TV 20. Lawrence Tech had a good lead after the first quarter, but now they find themselves trailing by three scores as the Wildcats of Indiana Wesleyan took control with the fast-paced offense. John Snow and John, and John Goebel back here with you at Blue Devil Stadium. And, and John, we talked about during the half just the fact that it took a while for the offense of the Wildcats to get going because the defense for Lawrence Tech really held them close. And then Andrew Rohde, with the background that he has as an offensive coordinator and as the brand-new head coach, he just rolled with the punches and just let his quarterback go. Yeah, you know, I was I was really impressed with with how they responded. You know, started the first quarter 7-0. to zero. Uh, I thought Lawrence Tech was in control of the game. You know, but seven points, that's not – that's one touchdown, and they scored real quick, real quick. And the – the maturity of the team you know I think when you have a, a fifth year senior uh, running your offense there uh, there's a lot that you can do and, and boy they they picked up uh, Co coach Rody's offense quickly and they were running fast pace Def defense for Lawrence Tech was huffing and puffing and man it is a 21 point ball game here I woo getting the ball in the second in the second half and if it was not mentioned earlier, the fact that this game was dedicated to a teammate of Lawrence Tech, Caleb Kelly, who suddenly uh, passed away this past season. So the so teammates trying to really rally around him, rally around the program as we start the second half here. Neil Campbell will go bring things out for Indiana Wesleyan, making some good ground, and he's going to be brought down right at the 30-yard line, and that's where Wesleyan will get the ball to start this second half. Yeah, we'll see what, what what they do out here. They're going fast pace, but now they're up by 21. Do they want to slow it down a little bit? Do they want to milk the clock? And that's where we saw that. That's how Lawrence Tech approached the first quarter. They really did the run game, and that takes a lot of clock out. And that can be either your best friend or your worst enemy in a lot of case scenarios with a lot of coaches, and no matter what sport it is, whether it's basketball, football, and anything with a clock on it, you try to manage it that way. So we will see how interesting this offense will proceed as Xander Stokes has had a lot of good completions, has found his open man. He has given it to Darian Williams, who has two touchdowns on the day, one running and one receiving. Way to fill the hole there by number 20, Matt Plaga. Plaga has been all over the place. He's been making some huge tackles, two tackles for losses, and, and they're not going to slow down at fast pace as we go. Defense confused. And trying to take advantage is Williams again. He found a hole. There goes the Darian Williams. And he's being chased down. And he is going to win the foot race. And a bolt of a start here in the second half for Wesleyan. To Darian Williams with his third touchdown of the game. Nice way to start. I mean, he, he got, a, got a hole and burst. Let's see it here. Defense not even set. A little dancing, but that's patience there. And look. That's one man missed, that's two. And here comes the speed right here. Yep, when you got a when you got a running back like that in your backfield, I mean, you gotta there's a lot that we can do here. And obviously Co Coach Schmidt or Coach Mitchell said it going into the second half. We have to stop the big plays. Well that was a big play right there. One too many big plays, especially of how the sec how the second quarter ended because Indiana Wesleyan, as we get a bunch of flags right here before the PAT, how that la how that last first half ended, a one, under a minute left, they were able to score on that last drive and score within five within the last five seconds, nine seconds actually rather on three plays. Yep, that's you know what they they have done that. So the f the first part of the second quarter that was two quick touchdowns, offense, then obviously the defensive score. Um, and then they ended that quarter with a touchdown. Now they're starting the, this, the second half with a quick score. That's not even a minute into the second half, and that's how you want to do it. That's, that's having control of the, of the game, and uh, it's going to be uh, – it's getting close to being out of reach here for Lawrence Tech, but ball game's not over. 14-22 left to go in just the start of the second half as we're waiting to get the PAT underway. Courtesy of Josh Clifton. From down by three scores to down by four scores. I love this view here, right here. Kicking into the woods. And there it goes, deep into the trees. Yeah, good luck finding that one, folks. Maybe, maybe one of the kids can go back there and get that ball. 
in front of a packed crowd, packed crowd here, not everybody, yeah. everybody's still sticking around because they think that they have what it takes to really stick with the best. Indiana Wesleyan coming in ranked number five in the NAI. And yeah. surprisingly enough, right above them is Morningside University, right where head coach Andrew Rohde came from as, as their OC. Yeah, you know, they're, they're uh, next man in, you know. They lost a, a heck of a coach, but uh, they're still uh, trucking. And you know what, for Lawrence Tech, this is, this is a good barometer test. You know, like, hey, where are we? We started our program the same time, same time as IWU, right? Uh, they've developed their team. They have a culture there. But Coach Mitchell, he's been putting some things together. You know what? The score is looks bad, but the game hasn't been that out of hand. It's, it's some big plays. You cut out some of the turnovers. It would be a different ball game. But you know, this is this is why we play the game here. Um, it'll be interesting to see how they open up the uh, offense down by this much. Uh, you know, we got a lot of running backs, but really need to get the ball in the, in the receiver's hands and, and score quick. They really have five total options at the running back spot. One of those counting is their own quarterback in Caleb Garner. So back deep to take this kick off. Jaden Rembert and also along with him is Devon Bentley who has the lone touchdown for Lawrence Tech as Clifton looking to send it away. Sideways type kick, the wind really gets to it. They're gonna let it bounce. And Rembert's going to go with it, and he's going to gain about five, six yards as he is knocked out of bounds around the 17. You know what? Uh, that was that kick ended up being a, a, a great kick because that field position is, is not great. Special teams is one-third of the game. You know, you kids out there listening, again, guys, special teams is not a play off. It's one third of the game. You have offense, defense, and special teams. It matters. Right here, ball's on the 16 yard line. It's a, a long field to go, but hey, you got some talent. And they started even deeper within the second quarter, in which they had terrible field position to start some of their drives. So now Caleb Gardner trying to work the offense back into it, and he's going to use his legs to, the, to his advantage, and he's going to be brought down after a gain of about seven. A good fight right there by a defensive back to get off the block, make the tackle, open field. That's tough. They were trying to get quarterback in space. But it was a good gain. Good gain in progress. That was their good opening drive. The fact that they put the ball on the ground, whether it was Davidson, whether it was Benley, or even Gardner himself, the fact that they kept the ball moving forward, that was what they wanted. And again, you know what? They have a great running game, but the clock is ticking. So... They're going to have to rely on his arm for most of it, probably in the second half. They do fake the pand off. Gardner trying to avoid traffic. Throw is in the middle. Low throw, but a great catch. And they will say it is a completed catch. What a play by Jalen Wallace. They will stretch out at the full completion. And it, and it appears that this has been overruled, and they're going to say incomplete. So a great effort, but yeah. what if... The official on the near side by the Lawrence Tech side signaled a catch, but it was the far side official who overturned the call. Yeah, that's a that's a big call right there. Would have been a first down. Now we got third and three. It's manageable, but have to get it. This is a must, must get first down right here. So Ben Britton alongside with C.J. Davidson. A lot of running options to try to get these three yards to continue to drive. Looks like they might be. Coach Yvonne Mitchell is going to call a timeout early in the second half to try to discuss because every single crucial conversion opportunity is not going to come very often like this. I mean, 33, it's very manageable, like you said, but you really got to talk about it when you're talking about a defense that held to other opponents at 20 points or less last year. Yeah, I mean, and you know what? They, they let in that first score, but it has been nothing since then. That I think this was a smart timeout. You know, you never want to... You know, you got to use your timeouts very wisely, and I, I try not to use them beginning of the, of, uh, of the half. But right here, being that we have to get this first down, it looked like they were going to bring some pressure on that. He didn't like the look, and it's better. Hey, let's we got a young quarterback. Let's slow it down. Let's get the right call. Do what we got to do to get this first down. As you mentioned, time ticking away. 13:28 left to go here in the third quarter. There's still another whole quarter left to go. There's plenty of ball game left. But it's really, for them, the offense trying to move things down the field and just try to give a fight. And still, even if it's a four-score game, 
try and not make this feel like it's out of hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got the same look by the offense out here, two, run two running backs. But Brennan in motion. Bringing pressure. They're going to give it to Davidson, and he's going to push forward, and he's going to be right at, appears to be the, the yard to gain. He may have rolled on top of somebody to get the first. And they are going to mark him a couple of inches short. So here we got fourth down and a very short one. So this is a very crucial call here. Yeah, at what point do you ask them to measure? You know, stop the clock, get them to measure. They're going to go for it here. This is very risky right here, deep within their own territory, trying to push forward. The Wildcat bench rooting on their defense. Try to get him off sides. Nope. Fourth down here, hand off to Davidson, and he's going to get the marker. First down for Lawrence Tech. Wow. Hey, gutsy, gutsy. I like it, but why hold back? Why hold back? This is it's not just an opening game. This is a division rival, you know. Uh, we got to get that first down, and, and, and they did. So, hey, good, kudos to running back right there. When they call your number on fourth and one, you better get that, and he did. I like it. So a brand new set of downs. Clock is in, used to wind down. Blitz. Nope. Gardner Ooh. trying to work her way around there. Davidson looks like he got a bit of a collar right there, and the pass is incomplete, but there is a flag down in the backfield, and it appears that they're going to get – C.J. Davidson for that hit. Looks like he grabbed right around the horse collar. Yeah, they're probably going to call a holding on that, on uh, C.J. Davidson, and uh, it, it's a tough one. You know, uh, runners, there's three phases to the game as a running back. Obviously, we all like running the football, but you got to be able to catch the, the ball, run routes, and then obviously pass protection, blocking, and uh, – it's it's tough not to hold when they get past you and, and they got a, a straight line to your quarterback. It's a scary thing. I've I've had it happen before. It's not the best. So they're going to repeat this first down. It's now first and 20, so a yeah. lot more ground to gain after they just worked very hard in that fourth down conversion to get to where they were. It's like running on a treadmill. They're going to give it to Britton. Britton trying to gain some more ground, and he does gain a few. Mm. Yeah, this is going to bring up a bit of a long second down here. Clock is ticking. Sticking with the run game, but got a plethora of guys there. And, uh, you know, hey, we got to – looks like they're hurrying up the offense a little bit, but it needs to be faster here. And it appears that right when they started that first quarter, they were using a bit of tempo, but they've gone away from that. You're right. And it appears they've gone away, but now in a crucial matter, it's down by four scores. They've got to really start thinking about clock management and trusting the arm of Gardner, and that's what they're going to do here. Second down, pocket collapsing. Gardner running out of room, and he's going to have to throw this one away. Gardner really ran out of room, and he got pummeled going to the sideline, and he's slow to get up. That's tough. That is tough for a young quarterback right there. You know, you want to get the first. You're, you're fighting. You got all your teammates depending on you. But really, you know, you got to get the ball out. You got to get the ball out. So it's a it's a one, two, three out. You yeah. know, and uh, that's tough. And the and defense, they're not they're not slowing up. But uh, let's hope he's okay. That was a scary hit, right? The tail end, just trying to get that ball away. But he had two linemen all over him. Yeah, and as we take a look at this crowd here you can see some of them have their uh, hoodies on a couple sweatshirts I don't know if you guys can see this on on the TV but the wind has picked up and it is it's chilly we got our papers flying around here up in the booth but a uh, beautiful night for football first night of the year man I am just so grateful to be doing this and next to you John Snow no it's definitely been, been a great experience it and just a great experience just to be a part of this program here at Lawrence Tech. I graduated from here not too not too long ago, back in December of 2022, and that's a good sign as Caleb Garner's back to his feet and he's joining his offense. But it appears he might try to he might sit this one out, but he's heading back onto the field. So he's gonna try to ride this one out, or it appears so, but he's gonna as he's gonna sit this one out. And we're gonna get our first look at Alex Ausman, a redshirt freshman out of Dearborn. Dearborn Fortson, and, and you know what? I saw him in practice, and and I I wasn't sure who the starter was. He he is not. He's more of a pocket passer, 
pretty ball, though. He throws it with a beautiful spiral. You know, has has good command of the offense. And uh, so we'll see how th how this changes things up. It could just be one play when you when you when you get injured or you take a um, if if the if the play of game has to stop before you get injured, you do have to take a playoff. So Osman, first snap he takes, first throw, and there's a flag down. Great catch by Wallace, and he's going to be brought back a couple of yards. And we'll see where this flag is going. So good, so good first impression on that first play, able to get it in and get it out. Yep. Indiana Westland, they uh, knew they had a young quarterback in his first play. Who knows how warmed up he is, and so they brought pressure. But he got the ball out. Unfortunately, that was third down and many more yards than that. So they declined the penalty, and it's going to be fourth down, and now comes the punt team. So good sob on defense right after the opening drive touchdown to this third quarter by the Wildcats. Yeah, and here's what I'm looking at. Clock, 11 minutes and 9 seconds, and I don't know how many yards we uh, Lawrence Tech actually got on that um, possession, but did use up a lot of clock and didn't get many yards, so... Good stop by the defense. So Carter Dixon will try to do his best into the wind. Low snap. This one's a pretty good one. Pass midfield calling for the fair catch is Isaac Smith, and he will corral it right about the 42-yard line. And that is where the Wildcats were going to take over. So we're going to see how fast this offense is still going to keep going. And because we saw right at the beginning, even up by by three scores, they still managed to rush deep, the rush offense, and they scored in under a minute. Yeah, you know, and, and football is truly a team sport. You know, I mean, when, when the offense struggles like they have been with Lawrence Tech, you're really putting your defense in a tough spot here. You know, so it, it, they're in a tough spot, but hopefully they can stop them here. And, ooh, good fake. Stokes working to his left. A good throw down the middle. He's got his man in Levi Tidwell. And he's past midfield right around the 45. John, I am liking some of these play calls. That was good. He had two guys open on that. Just about five yards apart from each other, stacked. And look at this tempo. It is just unstoppable the way that this offense is flowing, all led by their graduate seniors. They give it away to Darian Williams. And that time he didn't about gain anything. He's back to the original line of scrimmage. But as we mentioned, just the veteran aspect of these quarterbacks, whether it was Stokes or whether it's going to be Chase Bradman, the senior, and just the leadership of that is quarterbacks and then a brand new head coach. Yeah, he's it's making a statement right now. Perfect combination so far, and it's paying dividends to start off the season. Look at the alignment, the receivers. Trying to catch that. One man coverage over there. Three stacked up to the right, but they're going to give it to Williams again, and he's going to gain about two yards. Yeah, you know, again, they they are having uh, Lawrence Tech is having a hard time uh, getting the pre-snap alignment. We have uh, guys running running all over the place, and and uh, they're doing Indiana Westland is doing all of that dancing around just to do an inside zone run, you know. But hey, it works. Not as fast as the tempo that we saw after that play, but still a pre good pre-setup. Stokes faked it, and that one went nowhere. And Dante Batten was all over. It looked like he probably got a hand on it, but that pass was going right into right into traffic. Yeah, I think he's he's standing there because he, I think he knows he could have had a. He was close to getting an interception there. That's and a good third down stop there for the defense. And now they send out the punt unit, and it's the Wildcats. So a good defensive stop right there mm -hmm. by the Blue Devils, and that's one in which they definitely needed. Yes, they did, and uh, the offense has to capitalize. Nine minutes and 32 seconds. They used up a timeout right now. Uh, but again, this punt right here, depending on where it goes, this is when you want to pin them within the 10 yard line. Nolan Foley to try to do just that. They're going to let this one bounce, and that's a good bounce. It takes a beautiful roll, and they're going to let it keep rolling, and then it's going to be down at the one yard line. Ooh. You cannot do a better punt than that, courtesy of Nolan Foley. Yeah, good, good punt, Nolan Foley. I mean, end over end, and and he did that on purpose because it, it's you know footballs they're not round balls and they're oblong, they bounce weird. Uh, but he used that to his advantage. Uh, man, I played with a couple awesome punters, and I'll tell you what, it is a 
defense is best friends sometimes when you, when you can pin them down on the one yard line. So out comes Caleb Gardner after taking that huge hit, just trying to throw the ball away. It's only set up for one play, but then set up throughout the entire defensive stint. So now he has put himself in a very peculiar spot from the one yard line deep within his own end zone. Quickly in and quickly out. He's got Wallace there, breaks a couple of tackles, and he's brought down and right at the mark to gain. So it's a fresh set of downs on one play. Way to get the ball out. Way to get the ball out fast. You know, uh, they had uh, soft coverage on the number two receiver right there. And sometimes it can work like that. If you can get the ball out fast enough, just get him five yards. It's, it's, it's essentially like a run, but, um, you know, if you're not going to cover the receiver, tight then that's always a threat if you have a quarterback that can get it out fast. Still rotating in the running backs. Caleb Tabbert is now the new running back right next to Gardner and they're going to give it to him and he's going to try to bounce off one tackle and but he's going to be brought down immediately. Good coverage there by Luke Bays. Luke Bays has been all over the place. And it's interesting that they're rotating the running backs so much. Sometimes it's it's nice to get into a zone, but clock is ticking. Second in, what's this, nine, eight yards? They're gonna stick with him out there. Not a lot of room for error you can with this one drive right here. They're gonna have to trust Gardner to the air. He's got two receivers out to his left pocket again collapsing trying to get rid of it into the middle and right through the hands nearly a corral of a catch by Mauricio Jenkins I was just thinking before that play you know Mauricio Jenkins he's been out there on almost every single play tight end he's bit he's a big body I saw him in practice they, they do like to throw him the ball but uh, they haven't yet today I'll tell you what Caleb Williams is out there hustling on defense, he is causing a lot of chaos. We got an injured player down on the field. And that's uh, Jameis Carson, he's a graduate student from Murfreesboro, Tennessee, defensive back. So athletic staff and he's back up to his feet going off limping, so that's a good sign. We wish him the best. So a huge third down play coming here off the drop pass. Yeah, it'll be interesting what they do. You know, um, obviously they're, they have a lot of ground to gain here, but you gotta be smart with the football still. This is not a place on the field where you where you can risk a turnover. You know, you, you gotta live to fight another day, but if, if, I'm, if I'm on Lawrence Tech, I'm trying to score. I'm trying to score on every single possession at this point. Fast, fast. It was in this particular spot in which they really had to work hard and had to convert on fourth down just for a couple of penalties to back them up even more and they had to send it away. So now two receivers, two running backs stacked up. That's Davidson and Bentley. Two receivers to the left, one down to his right. Yep. Third down and nine. Looks like they might be bringing pressure, yep. And that's what they are doing. Gardner trying to use his legs. He's able to get around a tackle. He's got space to work with. Gardner still running, and he's going to be brought down at the 35. Good tackle there by uh, Clayton Mosier, but that's after a long run. And, you know, when you blitz in on the outside, they left the inside vulnerable. And, you know, hey, Caleb Gardner took yeah, Gar advantage. Gardner came up limping after that tackle play, and he's going to come out. So Alex Osman will be coming in. So first the, the big hit after just throwing the ball away and then another tackle after a long run play. Gardner's been beat up a bit today. Yeah, you know, uh, a lot of coaches are, are weary about, you know, letting their quarterbacks get hit. But when you got an athlete like that, sometimes you just got to let him go. And... and there was a bit of movement up in front and they're going to flag him for it. You know, that's that that happens too. Got a different quarterback. Sometimes the cadence changes, but I do like how Alex Alex Osman he was ready to go. <laughs> yeah, that was Gabe on a on a who was flagged there for the false start, the left tackle. And another thing to really think about, Caleb Gardner, he's not really the biggest of the big. He's only at five foot ten, 165 pounds. So that's why we always reference that his speed is always has been his game. He's always been throwing accuracy, and that's a plus. 
But now you got Ospin, who's a bigger, bigger guy at 5'11", 205, who can really throw him on a dime. He's looking to have one right here, looking for the deep ball. And that one is over the head and incomplete. Was meant for Jaden Rempert, but that one was just a little bit too far out of reach. It, it was out of reach, but I like it. I like it. I mean, you got to keep the defense honest. Throw, chuck one deep. You know, even if, if nobody catches it, that's fine. Because what I'm seeing is the defense is not respecting the pass right now. They got their safeties uh, moved up. They're, they're bringing five at least every single play. So now second down and 15. Osman, Osman trying to really show off the arm on that one, was looking for a huge play. They only rush four, trying to get the ball out again. And Jalen Wallace corrals it, and he's going to be shoved out of bounds right after a gain of five. That was a long throw. That's from one hash all the way to the other. And while we have a moment, we just want to remind you, alumni, join the powerful Lawrence Technological University Alumni Network. Collect, collaborate, and elevate your career with fellow industry leaders. Access exclusive events and opportunities. Be a part of a dynamic community dri driving success. Join us today at ltu.edu forward slash alumni. You're an alum, so hey, there you go. Just recently an alum. Welcome to the alumni program. Congratulations. Yeah. So a huge third down and 10 right here for Alex Ospin. Coming in for Gardner. Ospin looking around, pocket nearly collapsed. Moving, a shovel pass. That one was low and it's gonna be dropped and incomplete. He was all over him. I'm surprised there wasn't uh, maybe a pass oh, interference yeah. call there. Something, something different about Osman there. You know, he felt pressure. He got out of the pocket. He used his feet still, but he, but he still was looking to pass. You know, he, he was still looking downfield. He, he got the ball out in, uh, to, to one of his athletes. You know, so you just you get a little bit different uh, difference there between the two quarterbacks for Lawrence Tech, and you can see how, how, how difficult it is to choose which one you want to go with. But interesting enough that. Indiana Wesleyan has yet to be penalized in this game. LTU has done all that as Isaac Smith goes back to receive this long punt. And Smith took a big hit and a huge blow as he is knocked down at the 35-yard line. Isaac Smith with the return. That's a big hit. That's a good punt, too. But that's, hey, you know what, John? That stat about no penalties? Wow. I mean, for for the first game of the year, you're always expecting to make some some bad mistakes, you know, maybe going off sides, holding, uh, you know, guys cramping up, but that was no penalties. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, no penalties. And, and we remind you that we join you next weekend when Lawrence Tech takes on Ave Maria, coming up from the big, from the long drive down in Florida. Then they go on the road to take on University of St. Francis and then back to back home. Actually, that one's still a home game, and then a couple of games on the road. Stokes trying to go to the air again, and that one's way over the head. Yeah, we got a great schedule here uh, for Lawrence Tech, and and we're uh, airing all, all their home games this year on, on Channel 20, and and it, it's a great atmosphere. As we look at the schedule once again, it, a trifecta of home games to start the season, then they go on the road. They get, for two games and then come back to face their hometown rival for Concordia mm -hmm. and then a couple more games on the road then they finish and they finish at home a bit and we will finish on the road at Madonna here's the Darian Williams who has three touchdowns on the night and it refuses to come down as he's past midfield yeah yeah you could see his eyes get big on that one he saw daylight and he got north. I like the way he runs the football, you know, and ball security, that's something that you ha we have not had to bring up with him. High snap as the tempo continues. Stokes finds a man in the middle of the field, and that is that is Caden Curry. Stokes showing off the cannon right there. He chucked that ball. Look at this tempo. I love it. This offense is refusing to slow down it, showing no mercy. Gives it the handoff again to Williams, and he's going to gain about four. The off, this offense is just going so fast, we can hardly keep up, keep up with it up here. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's fun. It's fun. I mean, these, these guys got to be having a blast out there seeing the defense huffing and puffing like this. They're ready even before the official says, let's go. Mm -hmm. I love it. They had movement 
No flag is thrown. This play continues. Stokes looking for the deep ball into the corner. And that one is going to be broken up. Beautiful coverage put on. Great coverage. Great, great coverage. And you know what? I think I, I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, Xander Stokes on that one. Uh, Mackenzie Olibra with that tremendous coverage. Uh, yep. And I, I think Stokes thought that there was going to be a flag called, and they were trying to – they thought they, they had a free play. So heads-up play by the defense. Um, you know, you, you can't assume. You can't assume. you got to take every single play like as if it's uh, uh, going to happen. So. so a crucial third down and eight. And to keep them from get, entering into the red zone to try to get the ball back by, by limiting any more than what the score is at. Stokes again. Finds a man open out there. That's Isaiah Gibbs. Gibbs able to tiptoe his way down the sideline, and he does get the first down. See a flag on the play. We'll see if this one goes back. I think Lawrence Tech is hoping that it does. Another great play call there. This Wildcat team has been able to avoid the penalties thus far because twice in the end zone when they have scored, there was a flag for them, but then they waved it off. Well coached. Discipline. You know, and I'll, I'll tell you what, we'll see what the uh, what the call is here coming up. But And I played three seasons for Brian Kelly. Looks like, oh, it's on the defense. That is very unfortunate right there. And the penalty has been declined. It, it is a first down. That was a beautiful job right there by Isaiah Gibbs just to able to keep his feet in bounds right before it going out. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and I was saying before, I played three seasons with Brian Kelly at uh, University of Cincinnati before he left to go to Notre Dame. And our practices, we, we didn't even do a conditioning because our practice was full speed, as fast as we possibly could go. And, and his our goal was to run the mo most plays in, in the NCAA. We wanted our time of possession to be very low. And when we saw defenses not getting set before the, the play, we knew that we had them. That's what, that's what we've been seeing here all night. And it's just paid dividends to them. They have a four-score lead. Andrew Rohde has got to be pleased of how this first game has gone. Another movement up front, and this is a free play. Throw down into the corner just out of the fingertips, but they do get the penalty for the offsides. That was on purpose. That was on purpose. They saw it the first time. They didn't get the flag. So they said, hey, let's try this again. Go on two. That pass was intended for Nick Shirley. And, and, hey, like, it's funny how hard it is to not go off sides on offense when you go on two, but it really is. So, again, this is great coaching, the discipline by the offensive line not to flinch when you're going on two, especially when the defense is moving around and they do go off sides. It's a well-coached team, man. I am impressed. So, first down and five. They continue to move down the field. And a lot more movement along that front line. Stokes hands it off to Gibbs. Gibbs is going to be stacked up about a yard short of the line to gain. Yeah, you know, and, and I was just I was just looking at, at, at this possession at how fast they're going. But look at the clock. Three it has minutes. definitely been taken down. Yeah, it's it's ticking. They, they're they're staying in bounds, so they're still going high tempo, which gets the defense on their heels. But they're letting the clock tick. I think a few times it's been because the official have had to stop play just for a moment. Stokes quickly out to Levi Tidwell. Tid, Tidwell trying to cut the corner, and he's going to be out around the three yard line. Yeah, good pursuit out there by the defense. But again, that's that's more running. More running on, on their legs and getting tired out there. And again, they're going to go quick tempo. They try to get a quick score here. Try to go up by five scores. Quick handoff. Gibbs pound his way. And he's going to be marched short. One official says he's down. One official says touchdown. We will see what the final decision is. So again, it's quick tempo. Clock stops with 3.11. Yeah, let's see this replay here. Officials are converging as we look at this. Ooh. That is very close. You know, he got great shoulder pad level there. 
and they do mark him just at the one inch line. That is about as close as you can get. So it's second down. Yeah, it looks like where uh, the last punt was, uh, was downed at. So yeah, you got three downs to get one inch shotgun. Another handoff, Gibbs again. Mm. Gibbs is stocked up, but did he cross the line? And he did get stopped. Wow, Boy, what resilience by this defense to try to prevent this score on the one yard line. Yeah, who is that that just came in? Is that, that was Darian Murray. Darian Murray, Bellevue. Wow, fearless, man, that was a good hit. Bellevue has come up a few times. They, uh, that high school, that program over the past couple of years have put together some really dynamic teams. Yep, just outside of Ypsilanti. We got a lot of confusion on the defensive side. Players just trying to get out of bounds and they do so, and it looks like maybe a potential quarterback sneak. Stokes under the center. And instead, it's gonna be a handoff. Flags are flying everywhere. Hmm. And it's gonna be Dedarian Williams to put it into the end zone, but, we're, but there was three flags from all directions. We're gonna see if the, it appears that the Wildcats were a bit off sides. Oh, nope. And it's against Lawrence Tech, and it's another touchdown, the fourth of the night for Dedarian Williams. We're going to see how the setup was here, because look at all the confusion amongst the field. And it appears here it is. Yeah, was it illegal substitution? It must have been. And right there, Dedarian Williams just scouring the field, picked his shot, and went right after it. Oh, that offensive line just dug in deep. Looks like they just... Got got leverage. Moved the defensive line to the right, and that was an open space. When you got when you have one inch to get, and it's a defensive back as a running back, you got to get that. And he did. So Josh Clifton to put in the extra point, and he does so. It's been perfect today. Forty-two to seven, and so after one quarter, the Wildcats and Andrew Rode is their head coach. They have just taken control, and it's it's all because of that fast-paced offense. The defense has not been able to keep up with them, and they keep finding the open gaps, and that allows guys like the Darian Williams to, to run through, and that allows Xander Stokes to find his open men down the field. Yeah, you know what? I think that Indiana Westland, this, at this point, they are they are in the groove, and they are moving, and, and we're seeing a pretty good football team play right now. I would not be surprised if if Lawrence Tech is not the only team that this happens to. You know, Lawrence Tech, they're, they're not playing terrible, but th the score looks worse than it really is. And, uh, you know, it's, it's an uphill, uphill battle here, but you know what? This is when you start doing fundamentals, guys, and, and we got to do things the right way. Let's get some good film in. Still, I want to see fight. That's what I want to see. If, if I'm a coach, I want to see which one I, what, who's quitting. Who's quitting? Are you, are you sad or are you mad? Are you competitive? How bad do you want this? I want guys on my team that hate losing more than they like winning. It's not a great way to live your life, but uh, you know uh, you can you can win some ball games with with uh, guys with attitude like that. So trying to keep everything together as is, and that is one thing in which was talked about. Just building the the team chemistry over the off season. That was one thing that they worked on so much, and. Head coach Yvonne Mitchell was very pleased at how it went. So 2.15 left to go in the third quarter. LTU with appears to be a mountain to climb, but let's see how they respond to it. And Nick Robinette is going to try to bring this one back to try to get a good start, and he tried to find a hole, and that was a pretty good return there as he's brought down around the 26. Yeah, it was a great tackle by uh, number 51 there because uh, if he would not have made that tackle, I'm pretty sure there was uh, – Green grass in front of them. That's Brock Thomason from Williamsport, home of the Little League World Series. Ooh, nice, yeah. I think, uh, is Taylor still in it? I think so. They, they, were, they were probably they were in a couple of seasons ago. Yeah. You are a baseball player, right? Yeah. Played at uh, Lawrence Tech? Yeah, I played here for uh, all the four years underneath uh, Stan Eldridge. Shout out to him. Awesome. And I was, at, I was the late addition, like, I just kept in contact with him, and then he invited me out to practice during week one, and I was added onto the roster. So I thank him for giving me that opportunity. And, and just grow with the program, because just to see all these programs of all these athletic departments as we get an early flag on the field, and that was one thing that we brought up, the departments here, the sports, 
have continued to grow. And we mentioned with the football programs, both these teams have, were started five years ago, and now we're in year six. Yeah, there's a reason why these schools start an athletic program like this. Uh, I've heard that it's the front porch of every university. You know, it's the first thing that you see. And uh, I've been really impressed with what Lawrence Tech has done with their um, athletic programs and get a run here. They're going to give up to Bentley, and Bentley is going to be stocked up. It was a delay of penalty. It was a delay of game called. And while we have a moment, we go down to the field with an update. Here's oh, Elizabeth there. Kuhn. Liz? Hey, we've seen him on the field a couple times tonight. Ben Britton back from an ACL injury. This is his first game back. We're really happy to see him back out on the field. Tackle by Dolph Hughes. We've got a new quarterback in here. Oh, Ooh. that one was off the hands of Robinette, and it's going to be taken for a pick six. Right into the end zone is Wilson Wireball. Pick six. That's tough. That is a tough way to start as a quarterback. That not really his fault, but uh, when it rains, it pours. Second defensive score of the day. First one when there's a scoop and score. You see the handle off the bat right there. And then right through the hands of Robinette, and right there was Wireball. And that was just a given gift right there, one play. Love scoring touchdowns when you're on defense. That's so fun. And it stinks yeah, for the offense, though. You mentioned earlier new quarterback. This is Ricardo Marble Jr. 6'2", 195. He's a graduate student, and he's, and he's also another Detroit guy. And as the PAT is put in. So the mountain just gets even taller for Lawrence Set going through here. Yeah, it looks like they're, you know, getting some other guys some reps. I think that's smart. You know, preserve your starters. You don't want anybody getting injured now. There's still the full quarter left. Uh, you know, I, I would uh, I would still be trying to win. It's, it's tough, but, you know, I, I did want to talk about a little bit about, you know, the, the uh, Lawrence Tech and uh, – the NAIA in, in particular, these athletic programs. Um, something that's unique is, you know, you can get scholarship money. Oh yeah, you can get definitely. Scholarship money, and 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 to be able to get an education from a school like Lawrence Tech, I think the starting what starting salary is like sixty thousand dollars for graduates out of Lawrence Tech, and you can play, you can continue to play a sport and get school, money off a of school. And pff, I don't know about you, but the the price of colleges nowadays is crazy. So. I think it's it's an awesome opportunity for folks who live in the Metro Detroit area, you know, and, and beyond. But just to be aware of that that this exists and and that you can get a great education and play a sport and, and who knows who knows what you want to do after it. Maybe maybe you'll be a broadcast, uh, you know, play by play guy like you. Exactly, a lot of great uh, a lot of great a lot of great students have come out of this. One of the highest starting salary positions is Lawrence Tech with their graduates working for Fortune 500 companies. That's impressive. This kick is going to go to the near side and right out of bounds, and that's going to be a penalty. And this could be good. This is good field position to start out, as that's a free kick out of bounds. So this should be right about the 30, 35 yard line for Lawrence Tech to start things off. Yeah, I was going to say finally, it finally went out of bounds because almost every kickoff has been in that in that corner, you know, off to the left. I, I don't know if they're doing that on purpose. It could be a little bit on purpose, but there is a gust of wind here. Um, you know, but that, that's helpful. We'll see what happens. I don't know who's coming out at quarterback here, but got to get something going here. And that's the – and for Indiana, for Indiana Wesleyan, that is their first penalty of this game, if you can imagine that. On a, that, on a kickoff. Not the most likely of sources. So we'll see. And this and it is going to be Alex Amas, Osman, rather. Yep, he's a thrower. They're going to hand it off to Britton, and a good help there by Osman. But Britton's going to have nowhere to go, and he gets flipped around. That's a big hit. Wow. Neil Campbell there. on both on the offense that and the defense. Right. Campbell's been all over the place, and he played a huge hit on that one. And Britton, who we just mentioned, coming back from an ACL injury, that was basically a huge gasp right there. Yeah, John, I was always taught uh, as a running back, don't leave your feet. 
I know that uh, you know some of uh, some of these guys made it cool to jump over people, but that is you're asking for an injury there. Not even enough space to even try to attempt for a hurdle. So no gain on that one. And now to the sideline and through the hands of Jaden Rembert. He had him. Had him. That was a great throw. Oh, and a great God. jump and a great attempt. Everything was timed right, just that Rembert just could not hold it in. And so quickly a third down with 22 seconds remaining in this third quarter. Yeah, that was cover two. Um, so we got him in the right in the spot where he, the only spot he could he could be in to be open. Cover two, the corner is going to stay down. Safety has over top. Got to got to hang on the ball. Two receivers to the left. Osmond gives away to Brin again. Brin trying to gain some ground, and he's only going to gain a couple. Clock continues to wind down. That might be the final play of this third quarter. Yeah, I think they'll let the clock run, bringing out the punter. Fourth down and six. Three quarters of a football game are in the books, and for the most part, the Wildcats of Indiana Wesleyan have really taken control right at the second quarter, so they've taken control for all, basically a whole half, a yep. whole half worth of this game. And it's always been the upbeat tempo of the offense, but now we're seeing signs of struggle, but we will talk about that soon enough. We're gonna be coming back from break. Indiana Wesleyan up big over Lawrence Tech. Chevy Silverado has what it takes to do it all with a TurboMax engine and a 13.4 inch diagonal touchscreen. Any truck can help you make a living. This one helps you build a life. Chevy Silverado. Or GM employees with a current eligible lease can get this Silverado for $2.99 a month. Chevy drives the Motor City. Visit ChevyDetroit.com. From our very first breath, curiosity is why we question everything. Through barrages of whys and how comes, it now needs the tools to will its vision into existence. Tools that allow curiosity to blur the line between technology and magic. Be curious, make magic. The College of Arts and Sciences at Lawrence Technological University. Back here at Blue Devil Stadium in Southfield on a rather chilly night when we started out with plenty of sunshine, but we're under the lights on a Saturday night. Lawrence Tech, they've got 15 minutes to climb this mountain of a lead for Indiana Wesleyan, 49-7, to seven, and this is a crucial. They're going to go for it on fourth down and six. Alex Ospin in that quarterback. So Why let's not? see. Yvonne Mitchell putting a lot of trust in his offense to try to keep this drive alive. Wildcats showing pressure. They rush six. Osman is able to dump it off. He's got Ben Brin. He's going to try, and he's going to be stocked up, and he's going to be marked short. Wow, great stop. And that will be a turnover on downs. So a great effort put on by Ben Brin in the offense, but the Wildcats are going to take over at the 44. Yeah, you know, I, I know what they were trying to do there. It looks like they, they were trying to get set up the screen pass. Okay. That was stopped by one one player. You know, I didn't catch the number there, but it looked like it was a linebacker, and he probably had the running back man-to-man. Uh, -man. Running backs, what, what we do on a, on a play like that is we pretend like we're blocking. Then we accidentally, quote-unquote, let a man go, and then we turn around, ball is going to be in our hands. But you got to know if, if you're in man-to-man -man coverage because if you are, then you, you can't stand where that guy is. You have to get out, get out of the way. Stokes remains out there. He's had a good day along with this entire offense. Mm -hmm. Goes to the air, Stokes moving forward, able to break one set of tacklers, and he's gonna be brought down. Yes, number 11, Michael White on the stop, Bay City Central. They still got their starters out there. You know, they're taking this, they're, they, they're trying to get some playing time in, more reps. Or like try to keep up with the tempo here because these are their main stars and what you're going to be throughout them throughout the entire season. Gibbs able to avoid, but yet got tripped up. And again, it's White who's in the mix of it, and he's down and slow to get up. Ball was carried by Isaiah Gibbs. Yeah, it looked like he may have may have caught a knee there. Hey, I like hearing uh like hearing the name Gibbs and running the football in Detroit. 
A lot of local Detroit guys on both these both these rosters, and that just tells you the the homeness that you feel when you play a game like this. Well, I'm hoping I'm hoping that uh, the Detroit Lions have has a Gibbs that totes the pill pretty well this year. So here on third down and two, they're going to give it to Gibbs again, and he's going to get the mark to gain and plenty more for a brand new set of downs. First down, looks like they they brought pressure, and there was movement on that line. And again, they're going to try to move quickly. This defense, this offense has not really slowed down one bit. And again, they're going to give it off to Isaiah Gibbs, and he's just going to pound his weight, and he's going to gain about five. Yeah, I think that's just their tempo. I don't think, I don't know if they have a slowdown. You know, I think this is just how they run their offense. You know, I don't see them huddling ever. Why do it if you don't need to, I guess, right? Back to it again. Defense was not even set. Gibbs once more. And he's going to be brought down a couple of yards short to bring a third down. Well, you know, the folks at home might be watching this on TV and they're saying, why, why, why is the defense not getting set? Why aren't they getting down in their three-point stance? Well, it's, it's not that easy because on defense, you're rotating players usually. But if you're, if you're snapping the ball this quickly, you've got to get up. You've got to find know what you, assignment you're doing. I snap. Again, they give it to Gibbs. They're going to primarily run, go with a run game, but Gibbs is still pounding his way all the way down into the red zone at the 15. Yeah, it looked like... Uh, Jordan Lewis, number, big number 99 with Lawrence Tech. He was wanting a flag there for holding, didn't get called. And again, they move quickly. They are not slowing down one bit. They want to mount the pile. And head coach Yvonne Mitchell is going to take a timeout. Second one taken. Took one early on. And while we have a moment, we're going to head down to the field where Elizabeth Kuhn is standing by with brand new athletic director of Lawrence Tech. Liz? We're joined now by Marianne Melter. You're coming off of the national championship win in May back in the stadium as an athletic director now. Can you just walk us through that journey? Um, actually, it's still kind of surreal that um, I couldn't have written a better script. I mean, to leave coaching or walk off the field for one last time as a national champ is obviously a dream come true. Um, coming into the athletic director's position, fortunately, I had been an associate AD, so I kind of knew what I was going to put myself into. <laughs> But um, it's transition has been good so far. Um, I have a great team around me. Um, with, and Scott's still here, so I'm still calling him. Got him on <laughs> yeah. speed dial still. So, but things are going well so far. Well, good. What's your vision for LTU moving forward? I think right now for us is um, I th think my focus or is student athlete uh, welfare and development. Um, I really think it's important, especially nowadays with our student athletes and the pressures they're under. Um, that's going to be a big focus. Academic support, um, we, retention, making sure our athletes are graduating on time or coming in and graduating. And what would you say is special about LTU compared to other schools? I think for me, it's the people. Obviously, if you, I, I wouldn't be here as long as I have if you don't work with some amazing people. But also, I think the academics um, are second to none. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Coach. Thank you. thank you, Liz. And a couple of run plays there. It seems like they're going to stick with the run play to really milk out the rest of this clock is the Wildcats. And Isaiah Gibbs getting all the reps, and they're going to give it to him again. But this time they pull back and into the corner, diving his way into the corner of the end zone for the touchdown. It's Tristan Hayes. Yep, feeding the tight end there. Quick little out route. It's good to get him the ball. He's been working his butt off all, all game, number 41. Big, big guy out there. And... Uh, See, see here the replay, got a lot of space. Defensive back, look, so Mackenzie, Mackenzie Elbra, he, he was playing man coverage, his back was turned. He's the corner, number seven on, on Lawrence Tech. So sometimes I always tell my receivers, look, sometimes you can, you can block or you can do a fake. Pretend like you're running a route. Get the defensive back's head turned and. Extra point is good. So it's good, good on 56 to seven and as we heard from brand new athletic director uh, Marianne Meltzer who was the former head coach of the Lawrence Tech women's lacrosse team who brought home a national championship in this stadium awesome. one of two national championships that were won 
this year alone. The men's bowling team won it back in March, and then a couple of months later in May, at the start of May, Lawrence Tech hosted the entire national championship tournament, and the women's lacrosse team in overtime won it and brought home the red banner. That's what everybody fights for. So this is a, that's basically a whole message to the entire athletic department saying, hey, we started it. You guys got to follow suit. Yeah, and you know, Michigan's got a great – it's a great lacrosse state. I mean, we have – uh, we have uh, great f uh, women's and, and men's lacrosse here, and that's awesome that uh, Lawrence Tech has a great program like that. And, and John, you know, I, I do a lot of the talking here, but I'm curious. You, you played uh, baseball here. What was it like for you, man? What was it like being a student athlete here, and, and, and how'd you like it? What was, what was that like for you? Well, definitely being a student athlete, you have a lot of responsibilities, and also the fact that I was trying to find internships and trying to find work along the way to fill yeah. in even more gaps, trying to do more than just manage your practice schedules and your and your class schedules. And you have great people here to help you. You have your advisors that try that meet with you before the year starts. As Robinette's gonna try to bring this forward, after deep within the end zone, trying to find room to run, he's gonna be brought down around the 16. But just to finish the thought, these student athletes, they have all the one-on-one -on -one personnel that they need here at this university. That's what makes awesome. this that's what makes Lawrence Tech very great. It's one-on-one -on -one right in front of you because if you go to a bigger university like U of M, Michigan State, Ohio State, you're not going to really talk to many people in person because that's where everybody's going. And when you talk to student athletes here of why they chose to come here, not despite athletics, the academics is right there face-to-face -face in person. That is what everybody strives on, physical help right there in front of you at all times. That's, that is a, that's a pretty powerful thing right there. And, you know, as a, as a student athlete myself in, in college, I can say, uh, you know, it's uh, going to class is important, you know, and, and obviously you're, you, everybody wants to be a professional athlete, but what, what are you going to do after after it's done, you know? And uh, going to hand off here and a good pile stack up and able to break his way forward. Kayla, Kayla Tabbert. Brand new set of faces on this offense is trying to make something out of nothing as to what this lead is for Indiana Wesleyan. As we also see Ricardo, Mar Ricardo Mar Marble Jr. back in at quarterback. Yeah, and we find a lot of uh, Lawrence Tech grads here in the booth, man. It's nice to have you here. And yeah. I know you guys have a great partnership with uh, Yellow Flag Productions. Rubitani, our president. Chuck Pellerito is our producer. John Kitt on the field as one of our directors. Here's Tabbert again, and he's got space to run, and he's going to have to be brought down near the middle of the field. What a great run that was by Tabbert. Got real skinny. Got real skinny and slippery. Put his foot in the ground and got north. I like it. Good run. So that brings them to the 46-yard line. Yeah, and Caleb Tabbert out of uh, Oxford, Michigan, also went to Liberty and Eastern Michigan. So, you know, we got we got guys from all over the place. That's Transfers. quite a combination of schools right there. They go to all that length and then come here. Low snap, Marble Jr. has got a man, but that was way over the head, and it's going to be incomplete. Yeah, you know, with the with the NCAA changing the transfer rules, uh, you know, you, you see that more often. And and you know, part part of me is is like, you know, hey, make a commitment to your school and like have some pride. But at the same time, hey, it, it's it's about time. Let let these uh, these kids that they're they're making millions for the schools. Um, you know, a great athletic program is going to attract more uh, uh, enrollment. And uh, you know it's going to help the community, more more students, more people coming on campus, and another handoff, and that one is going to be brought down right about the 47, and that was Jacob Ranny, who was one one of five running backs that they have used so far throughout this contest. So without third down and seven, Orange State trying to make a little bit of dent into this. Giant Armors hold in which they find themselves in against the Wildcats. Because Indiana Wesleyan has shown up. It took it one quarter, but Andrew Rohde's team has definitely shown out. Another run by Ranny, and he's going to be brought down about a few yards short, and it's going to be fourth down. 
Henry? Yeah, you know, I have, uh, I have been uh, on on this end before in college. You know, when when you're when you're number two and and you know it might not be the best circumstances all the time, but you, you get a chance, you get a shot to be on the field. And and these guys out here, they're not they're not going halfway. They're going hard. They want to they want to prove themselves. So I wouldn't be surprised if, if they keep marching the ball down the field. But it's fourth down here. Marble Jr. He's going to be wrapped up. A beautiful coverage put on right there by Isaac Abeo. Still out there, one of their main starters on defense, and he is still showing up, and he's put probably the exclamation point for the defensive side. Yeah, we have called his name quite a few times, and of course, he had to do that right after I said that they were marching the ball down the field. That's how it goes, man. So a turnover on downs, and the offense for Wesleyan is gonna take over, and we get our first look at Chase Bradman, who's gonna take over at quarterback. Yeah, it looks like Chase Bradman, he's also a senior, so good to get him in there. 5'10", 185 out of Kentwood, Michigan. Gonna take over for Stokes right now, but they're gonna give that ball and run it for a while. Kept those legs turning. Keep your legs pumping, get a couple extra yards. Good run. And that is Josiah Curry. A transfer from Ferris State. Yeah, Ferris State, they, what a program there. It is. It, I mean, back-to-back -back Division II titles. I mean, that is talent in the making and, ta and talent within, within the shadows. The Bulldogs. And, and uh, you know, I think, it's, I think it's awesome that these kids are able to transfer to these schools and start, you know, play, playing time. Man, it is, if you're, if you're going to play the game, man, playing time is a great thing to have. They're going to give it to him again. Curry trying to cut the corner. He gets the mark to gain. And another first down for the Wildcats as they keep moving on down the field. Yeah, I just, got, I just uh, bumped into Chuck Pellegrino here uh, thinking, uh, thinking I was hitting the hole hard like that. That was a – saw daylight and he just burst. Yeah, and, and while we have a moment, unleash your creativity at Lawrence Technological University's College of Architecture and Design. From visionary concepts to hands-on projects, we nurture your architectural passion. Join us in shaping spaces that inspire. Enroll today and let your journey build wonders. Learn more at ltu.edu forward slash architecture and design. Yeah, we're gonna see this earlier, John, but I'm curious, what kind of magic can we expect here? A plot of magic to come from this university and from this team as the season goes on. And that's just one thing that Avon Mitchell goes with, and a lot, and with all these head coaches, they go with the school spirit, they go with the school motto. One motto that has stuck with this place is theory and practice. Mm -hmm. And practice, that's the athletic side. Theory is the academic side. That's a good combination right there. But now the new one for this year, be curious and make magic, that is basically what all the athletics are doing. Trying to be curious, trying to create and trying to expand more, more recruits, more looking outwards than just Michigan. And that's what they brought in with everybody a part of this athletic department. Yeah, you know, I, I, something I love about sports is the the life skills that it teaches you. Good power run there. Got, I think he got the first. Yeah, and he does get the mark to gain. It is Curry again. He's going to get plenty of reps. But yeah, you know, those, those wi winning habits, winning habits and, and I don't care what level it is or what sport it is if you play a sport beyond high school it is different it is a grind you're not always going to love it exactly. but the discipline the things that you learn that are transferable throughout life it's it's so key you know and and you know I just I I, I think that part of that theory and practice right it's like look I have heard before that luck is just when preparation and opportunity meet. You know, that's what these kids are going to be doing. That's what, that's what you did. That's how you're here. Good pass. Roll pass there. Good shuffle there on the miss. And a good gain. Put on, and that was Curry over there in the receiver slot. Yeah, you know, they're uh, methodically still moving the ball, but the clock is ticking. And you know what I have not seen today? I don't know if I've seen a single snap under center. The only possible snap under center was when Indiana Wesleyan was on the one yard line 
and it appears that they were going to go for a quarterback sneak, but then Stokes then handed it off to, to Darian Williams for his fourth touchdown. Williams has had a great game running and receiving. His legs have been an yes. impact so, so far today. Yeah, he is going to be dangerous. And so is going to be Curry as he continues to power four. Three consecutive times he gets a brain who sets it down. Yeah, you know, uh, football evol has evolved a lot in the last 10, 15 years with all the different rules, um, learn about concussions, things like that. You know, one of the positions that I miss, man, and I just want to see it again, is the fullback. I like seeing eye formation, you know, run the ball. But, hey, Lawrence Tech started out running the ball great, but you got to be able to pass. Got one touchdown happened within the first five minutes of the game, I think. It's almost like it. you got to finish how you start. And in the case of Indiana Wesleyan, and Josiah Curry continues to move forward as he is within scoring range, and it's going to be second down and goal. It, it took a while for Indiana Wesleyan to get things going because think about how it all started. An opening drive touchdown via Lawrence Tech in the run game. And then immediately after that, the defense came up with a three and out. And it was right after that, Indiana Wesleyan took control. Like, hey, wake up call. Yes, and they sure did. So Bradman and Josiah Curry looking to add on to the mountain lead in which they have. Trying to put up a 60 spot. Flags on the play. Bradman's going to run with it, and he's going to get into the end zone. And Chase Bradman has a rushing touchdown to put on the exclamation point for this game for the Wildcats. Look at the senior getting excited. Good run, there's a flag on the play. It is a false start and it's gonna go against the Wildcats so they will take that touchdown away. Wow, there's- Only the second penalty. Yeah, second penalty. The first one was a free kick out of bounds. Yeah. This is the first true offensive penalty. Wow. Yeah, you can't be mad at that. That's like uh, saying, yeah, I got two kids. One's a doctor, one's an engineer. Like, wow, come on now. And I bet Bradman's like, I just celebrated for nothing. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. let me score, and then and it's not going to count? He's gonna, like, what are you guys doing? He wants to get another one. Well, he's got a little bit more ground to gain if he wants that one. So second down and 11. So basically get to the goal line. Play clock running inside three. Trying to get the snap off, and they do. A little fumble on the handoff to Curry, and he loses the ball. It's a fumble, and it's loose, and it's going to be picked up, and the Blue Devils are going to take over. The first real sign of life for Lawrence Tech, and they get a break here late in the fourth quarter to try to make something happen. Yeah, hey, you know, you wish that would have happened in the second quarter, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know, life gives you a lemon, make some lemonade. And you know what, they got the, they got the turnover. I'm sure, I'm sure the running back is gonna be on himself about that. You never wanna fumble, it's not fun, but see what we do with it. Alex Osman back in at quarterback. He's got Caleb Tabbert on his side. Two receivers out to his right. Take it, they got a man open down the middle. That's Charlie, and he's got room to run. A huge gain and more inside deep Wildcat territory. That is Charlie Ward. Nice, good find. Getting your big man the ball. Look at the blocking downfield. That is the largest play of the of the entire game for Lawrence Tech, all the way down to the 30. Yeah, like I said, you know, j just because the the score is what it is, these guys aren't aren't letting up. They're trying to show the coaches what they got. First catch by Charlie Ward, and there is moving up front, and this is going to go back five yards. Charlie Ward, great name. Two-sport Heisman Trophy winner. And for those of you who are watching that didn't get to see the whole game, we're seeing 56-7. to seven. Let's not forget, that's 56 points in three quarters. Not even three full quarters yet, but they didn't score a point in the, in the first quarter, and... Uh, put up 56 since then. Only took two quarters worth. That's a whole half of a game. It does not take that long. And there's a fumble on the snap, and Osman just has to fall on it. Ooh, that so bad. after the huge drive, a false start, and then and a misplay on the snap. 
Yeah, and you never want to fall on the ball like that because if somebody let like big number nine to five gets on top of you, you're going to get the wind knocked out of you. That's tough. So after a huge drive on that catch play by Charlie Ward, and now setting up an even longer scenario, second down and 20. Osman hands it off to Tabbert. Tabbert gonna make some running room and he makes some good ground. Back up to the original line of scrimmage start. Yeah, we got a lot of the ones out there on defense still. That was a good run. Kept his feet moving. He's been showing some stuff, you know, and it, 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 running back is one of these positions where, you know, you got 11 guys going, coming after you on every play. You get beat up. We see in the NFL what's happening right now with them not wanting to pay some of these, some of the best running backs in the NFL. And so it's always good to have multiple, get, get some experience in there and, you know, but. Again, this is this is right now. Coach is going to be watching this on film. Who, who who's quitting? Who's who's fighting? So again, third down, up in the middle. That one's deflected and incomplete. Yeah, and you you know you you hate it when this happens. You really do. But when you lose by this much, you know everybody's job is going to be you know at risk here on the team. You know the starters. You're no longer the starter. Hey, it's everybody's job is open. It's going to be a tough week of practice. Coach is going to get into them. But the season isn't over. It's a long season. And trying to keep the drive alive. They've converted on fourth down below. As we tell you, that join us next week, September 2nd, as Blue Devils take on Ave Maria, making the trip up from Florida. Kickoff is at 7 p.m. on the LTU Sports Network. Check it out on the ltuathletics.com or on our YouTube channel, just search LTU Athletics. Beautiful dump off pass to Tabbert, trying to make some good ground, and he's gonna be out of bounds just a couple of yards short, and it's gonna be a turnover on downs. Yeah, you know, the uh, got about one minute, 14 seconds to go. And you know, it's not, not the outcome that I know Coach Mitchell is hoping for. It's tough for the seniors, but like I said, it's a long season. You got to keep things into perspective. I, I always felt like this. Look, I, I had the great fortune of being on a lot of championship teams. And I remember my losses way more than I remember my wins. And, and the only losing season I ever had was my last year of college. And I will say I learned more about the game than I ever did. Because in a loss, you are analyzing everything. Nothing goes... Uh, Nothing gets swept under the rug, and you're trying to analyze. Hey, what what went wrong? What do we what what where did we make mistakes? Where can we make some corrections? Where sometimes when you you win, you, you just kind of let things uh, let things go. But you know, it's a great opportunity for Lawrence Tech to bounce back. First Ave Maria next week, and uh, you know, coming all the way from Florida. So that's a long trip, and LTU is went down there last year. And I've been to that campus. It is an immaculate campus in Ave Maria, but it is very hot and humid when you yeah. make it all the way down there, especially during, during early March, because that was one part of the baseball yeah. trip in which we went on our Florida trip was to Ave Maria in Naples. Cool. And it's a magnificent field, magnificent campus, a lot of wide open space. Yeah. And they got a pretty good football field as well. Cool. So for them to make the trip up here, one, of the, yeah. one way that, hurt, that helps Lawrence Tech with the traveling, but also it gives them a taste as to what it is like environment-wise here. Yeah. Timeout was taken by Yvonne Mitchell. It was final timeout as victory formation is underway and Chase Bradman takes one knee and we'll have to take one more to secure first win of the season for Wildcats, the number number five ranked team in the NAIA. Yeah, that might be uh, that might be changing soon. I, I have a sneaking suspicion we're gonna be hearing a lot about them. As the, as the season progresses, and they're only going to get better. You know, uh, one, one thing I liked about tonight is no no big injuries. You know, guys were staying healthy. On both sides of the ball, there really weren't that many penalties. There really weren't, you know. Just a um, couple of costly miscues on the part of Lawrence Tech, but and then only two total penalties for the side of the Wildcats. And they played very clean football. Got a little bit chippy in the beginning, but all cooler heads were prevailed. So... Indiana Wesleyan came into town and spoiled the opening night on what was to be a cute, a cool wideout. 
and what turned out to be a very cool evening. Started out very warm, but then the wind picked up. But for Lawrence Tech, it is all a learning experience. Avon Mitchell, he is still proud of all of his guys. He is proud of the chemistry that was built during the offseason. And definitely a lot to learn and a lot to grow upon as the games move along. And one, any final thoughts on this? Yeah, you know, it's, it's tough, but hey, football's back. And I'm excited. I'm really grateful to be here. I think that uh, the guys fought hard, and it's a long season. We'll see what happens next week. And you got to, you got to, you know, take 24 hours, enjoy the victory if you're Indiana Westland, and then uh, it's, it's on next next week. It took Indiana Wesleyan one quarter to figure out the offense, and once they did, they went completely off. They scored 56 points within two quarters worth. That is basically a half game's worth in which you basically capture the victory. And just thoughts on the offense. I mean, that's the main reason why the, the margin was so big. The offense just kept going. And how do you condition yourself to be able to stay that much in tempo? Yeah. That's that. It's it's near impossible. Like so, you know, uh, I played I played a lot of scout team in, in college, and and it was awesome because I got to on the in scout team you are pretending to be the other team. So for me, I was I was able to play you know Steve Slayton, the running back from uh, West Virginia. I learned I learned how to be a little more shifty than what I'm usually uh, what I usually am. But if you're playing against an offense that's uniquely okay. Okay. fast like this, and that is not what your team is set up to be, you can't replicate it. It's really hard to do. So, so a lot to learn. Coach Mitchell talking over with his team. He started out 1-0, and Indiana Wesleyan comes in and takes care of business, 56-7. So for John Goble, I'm John Stowe. We will see you next weekend when Ave Maria comes to town right here at Blue Devil Stadium to take on Lawrence Tech. We'll see you next time for Lawrence Tech Athletics. This Lawrence Tech Athletics broadcast is brought to you by Chevy. Your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers are proud to be the automotive sponsor of LTU Athletics. Chevy drives the Motor City. Henry Ford Sports Medicine treats the whole athlete. To make an appointment, visit henryford.com forward slash athletes. And Michigan First Credit Union. Michigan First offers a full range of financial products and services, including checking accounts, mobile deposits, student loans, and car loans. Visit MichiganFirst.com for details.